Division 2 and you're live with Tux Saturday night, late night stream. What's going on, banditos? I got another good show for you tonight. And tonight we are going to be talking about armor regen and how some of you might be doing it wrong and some of you might be doing it right, but we're going to go through the details and tell you how Tux does it. That is what we're going to talk about tonight. Along the way, I am going to be showing you guys several builds, all right? And, um... And you're gonna like all of them actually. So if you guys are familiar with um, some Invisi Shield concepts, if you're familiar with that, we're gonna talk about that a little bit because all of these are built on that principle. So, but uh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's just make sure I am coming in loud and clear. Appreciate those Tux Lives. What's going on, what's going on boys? Um, but yeah, hit me up with a, uh, uh, okay, I'm getting to Tux Lives. So I'm assuming you guys know the routine. I love you guys a lot. I think that's what that means. So. If I'm getting text uh, lies from Anthony DeMar, Digital Dogs, Michael Myers, that means I'm coming in loud and clear. And let's make sure I don't get all fuzzy there. So, uh, cool, cool, cool. So, uh, let me know if for some reason my sound isn't coming in loud and clear, but we'll fix that. But yeah, what's up? Saturday night. Happy birthday to my boy, Digital Dog. What's up, Digital Dogs? Happy birthday, Capricorn Brothers for life. Hope you don't have too bad of a hangover. How does your liver feel, man? <laughs> That's how I knew I was starting to age is my liver was just not doing as good as it It was back when I was in college When I could drink like a tank like Frank the tank <laughs> You know what I'm saying What up what up, let's see who's in the live stream with this. So uh, what's up Anthony DeMar? Appreciate you man Michael Myers. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome Heart of awesomeness. Oh man. Yeah, we need this guy in Texas Players Club <laughs> with that kind of name, part of awesomeness. You gotta say it with like a certain like tone too, right? Like, I wish I had an echo back there. I'd be like, part of awesomeness, news, news. Appreciate you, man. Welcome to the live stream. Ultra Mega Man, all right, we got our Australia boys representing. Who else is from Australia? Let us know. Where the parts of the world are you guys hailing from? Are you in the UK? Are you in France, Brazil? This is what I love about these streams, man. It brings everybody, all the division agents, all the badass banditos from around the globe, all in one central spot to talk about hot topics like this. Xander, what's bruh? What's good, brother? Evil Sar, how's it going, man? And Fat Cat, clan mate. All right, all right. Fat Cat, what up? He's got the munchies. Hope you're still uh, not locked in up there in <laughs> Idaho. What's the snow situation? Retirement is awesome. He says watching a tuck stream while burning some kush. Oh, baby <laughs> Oh, baby retirement sounds great, man. Wish I was with you Calvin Bowser says finally some truth on armor regen. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, uh, topic of the week apparently Mike G hello from soggy Seattle. All right, man, you're my neck of the woods Mike G Welcome, man. I'm from Portland soggy Portland it looks just like you see the weather is here in my house, just like you see right here in the in the in the video. It's foggy, wet, cold, boo, boo. What up, Jay Sin? <laughs> Death Assassin here. All right, all right. Welcome, man. Evil is also from Australia. All right, we got a couple boys from Australia. We got quite a few uh, Aussie boys joining the Tux clans too. I believe uh, they're making a strong little presence. I think it's the PlayStation platform. So glad to see that. Hey, if you're in the Tux clan, uh, throughout the live stream, if you don't mind making sure you hit up the uh, hashtag Tux clan, because people will be talking or be uh, uh, wanting to join the Tux clans as I bring it up. And uh, it's helpful to know who you guys are so that you guys can start that conversation, which is, uh, you know, give me your, uh, your ID or, your, or whatever you call it for your platform. A gamer tag if you're on the Xbox for example but um, yeah, yeah, yeah a little housekeeping before we jump into the top again again we're gonna be talking about armor regen all right and how you might be doing it wrong and you might be doing it right but we're gonna talk about how we do it the tux way how tux puts a little sauce on it and you're gonna get a ton of builds here so get your screenshots ready all right get your screenshot capabilities ready get that on because I'm gonna be showing you a lot of builds all of these builds I would run Okay, and so we're gonna be doing different degrees of Invisi Shield. Invisi Shield. You know what I'm talking about? Do you guys know Invisi Shield? If you know Invisi Shield, let me know in the chat because that's a very, 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 very special thing. That's one of my uh, signature 
build designs, basically. Uh, it's a layered system of protection. We're gonna be talking about that, but before we jump too far ahead of ourselves, let's just make sure that you first things first, all right, before you guys go any further, before you say another word in chat, that you hit the like on this video. That is utterly the most important thing in this video, all right? You need max likes, max likes, max likes. And subscribe if you haven't done that. Love you guys. Yeah, if you, if you like what I do, if you want to support the community, then make sure you hit the like on this video. That's the least you can do. I really appreciate that. And obviously watching the content showing up, that's a big deal. So I love you guys for doing that. Also, uh, like I said, subscribe if you haven't and consider joining uh, Texas Players Club. There are perks. There are perks. Speaking of uh, uh, Texas Players Club, members of Texas Players Club, and you know who you are because you got that fancy little skull. And I see a lot of you guys are leveling up in the Players Club. I see a lot of red skulls up in there. A lot of black skulls too. Awesome. So that means you guys are leveling up uh, in those gray skulls. That, you guys, that means you guys are on your way. Appreciate that. Anyways, uh, yeah, so welcome to all those people that have joined Texas Players Club recently. I know there's a ton of you. Uh, we get 10 to 15 a day. But um, hey, this is what I want to say to members of the Texas Players Club. This is important, all right? So I just released um, the other day, I think it was Thursday morning. Um, I'm losing track of my days. Could have been yesterday. <laughs> I don't remember. But I just dropped the 8% regen Rockstar build yesterday. And it's a big deal. It's a really good build, all right? It's a really good build. And um, I know you guys have been looking forward to that build particularly because um, I, I uh, gave you a preview gameplay footage about a week ago um, uh, showing off what that build can do. And it's 8% regen is really high on a DPS out of cover build, okay? This is not a tank build. This is a six red core build with 8% armor regen. So it is a rock star at regenerating armor. Let me just put it that way. Anyways, really good build. It's a one of a kind. It's never been done before. Um, anyways, you gotta check that one out. The link to that is in the description of this live stream, all right? So you just open up the description area. There's a link there. Now, if you're not a true or hardcore bandito member level, then you will have access. So just make sure you upgrade to that level. And uh, for those of you that are new to my channel, um, if you didn't know, classified builds are secret builds made just for the Texas Players Club, true and hardcore bandito member levels. And these are really, these are extra builds I make as a thank you for supporting me because I really appreciate it. So I do a little extra work for you guys. And uh, thank you for supporting the channel and therefore the entire community because that's what I do is I build and support the community. So if you want to tap into these secret builds, you can get access today, right now, just by making sure you hit the join button, which is just below this video. Now that join button is only going to show up if you're on the PC. If you're not on the PC and on your cell phone, then you need this link. And I'm dropping that link right there in the chat feed. That link is also in the description area. And if you're watching this on the replay, then that link will also be in the comment section. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So here we are, talking armor regen. So I got some really good gameplay footage for you guys. So I'm gonna be playing this along the way and then pausing and then I'll try to match up some of the builds. I tried to save all these builds in my loadout slots, okay? Um, and so while this gameplay footage is scrolling through, I'm gonna switch to that build. And then we were gonna, we'll talk about it real quick, okay? So armor regen. Okay, so there's different, several different ways to do armor regen and there's more than one right way to do it, okay? but um first let's just clear up the air there are two types of basically armor regen builds right um i mean there's some stuff in between but two major classes okay one there are armor regen tank builds right and so i'm talking about like you see those right this is super tanks right they uh, they run probably a bulwark shield or some sort of shield a true tank is what i'm talking about right and then maybe uh, four pieces of bulwark uh, with armor regen on everything and maybe you got a bellstone piece or whatever your build is right so those are the, the tank builds okay but that's not what we're going to be talking about today because i think those are really pretty straightforward uh basically you're just maxing out your survivability on a tank build and um and you know armor regen is just one of those components but it's you know with bulwark you know uh you got a ton of armor regen right you got the what bulwark's giving you with makeshift repairs as well as the armor regen you're loading up on your build so that's huge but what we're but what we are going to be focusing on is the dps armor regions okay 
So the ones, the idea of a DPS armor regen is to give yourself some sustainability along with your damage output, right? Now, along with that are a hundred different degrees of survivability, I guess when it comes to armor regen, right? You can have a little tiny bit of armor regen, you can have a shitload ton of armor regen, and everything in between, okay? Now, here's the deal. If you're not like me, <laughs> or let's just put it this way. I mean, just check the scene out here for a second. Watch this, okay? This is high survivability, really high, okay? Now, I'm, I'm doing this type of stuff on purpose, right? I'm kind of just standing in the damage zone and the hotbox, literally the hotbox. So you can see uh, how much heat this can take. <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but... Uh, and so, so I'll be doing that throughout the video gameplay footage. I'm, I'm, so I'm doing a demonstration, right? This is how much pain the build can take. Um, so there's two things though with DPS builds, right? So if you're a laid back player, which is what I was gonna say back in a second, if you're not like me, <laughs> right? You're a laid back player and you're behind cover, then you don't need as much armor regen as, uh, as I might have on my build, right? But with me, with my armor regen builds, the way I usually put them together for the most part, is to get out of cover, right? And and run around like El Pollo Loco with my head cut off, right? Without a shield, that right there is the big deal, shieldless, right? And so hence Invisi Shield. So what I do is I develop a 360 degree shield around me. And the reason why I do that and the way that I call this Invisi Shield, and I'll, I'll explain that in more detail here in a moment. But the reason why I do that is because I believe that a lot of your survivability is your speed and agility. So the fact that I'm moving and running is part of what keeps me alive. Forget about the armor regen. Forget about my armor and whatever else I got going on. The fact that I'm moving quickly and killing quickly and jumping and running and diving and whatever, that agility and speed is part of your survivability equation. And so the shield takes away from that. The shield is basically a bullet sponge, right? It's attracting bullets and it's slowing you down at the same time. So, and it does, you can have an invulnerable shield as well, but why have the armor regen if you're gonna have an invulnerable shield? You get me? And that's part of the equation, that's a part of the topic that we're gonna be talking about. You know, you're doing it wrong, quote unquote, you're doing it wrong. Like, why have the armor regen uh, if you're gonna run a shield, you know, to spec into the shield, sort of gotta pick one or the other, or um, if you don't, then you're gonna end up just being a tank, just a tank, right? But you're not gonna have the kill power. Um, anyways, we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. That's obviously a bigger discussion. But um, yeah, so 360 degrees of protection. And so with the hard shield, right? You can still get shot in the back. You can still take bullets up the bunghole, right? And so that's why I like Invisi Shield better because not only, again, speed and agility, I think are important, um, and I can move faster, and all your animations are faster, like reloading, switching weapons, whatever you do, that's all faster, right? And so, and then it frees up a skill, you know, for whatever, and for me, I'm running heals, and I'll talk more about that too, lots to talk about. Um, but yeah, the hard shield, you still get shot in the butt, and with Invisi Shield, if you get shot in the butt, I'm just as protected with the system that I have going on, the layered system, okay? So, now don't get too entranced on a single build because I have a lot of different builds here that I'm gonna show you, like at least four, at the top of my mind. And um, they're gonna bring varied degrees of damage output and varied degrees of survivability. But all of them have one thing in common, shieldless, out of cover gameplay, okay? so. If you love to play out of cover without a shield, then this video is for you because I'm gonna give you several builds to do just that, all right? And each one of them is just gonna be based on your play style, how fast you are, but all of them, I must say, they are out of cover. Like I said, they're all out of cover. So if you're more of a relaxed player, then you're gonna have to adjust these a lot because they're made to be aggressive out of cover. If you notice, I hardly get in cover and I'm doing that on purpose, right, because I'm showing you what these can do. And so the idea is to move and you still have to get the enemies to miss a few shots. So you don't want to take 100% of their brute force, but I'm surviving a lot. And every single one of these builds have a second thing in common, okay? And all of those is you have to be close in range. So if you're playing deep or if the enemies are tagging you from 50 meters away, you will go down, you eventually. And so 
uh, you're not going to be able to heal through four enemies tagging you from 50 meters away. You have to get in there. You have to get in the kill box and take them out, right? And get them to miss the shots and move. And don't just stand there like an idiot. Because <laughs> uh, that's how you're going to get, that will get you killed. Even if you're a bulwark tank, if you just stand there, you're going to go down. It's just a matter of time. All right, all right. Is that enough to get your minds a turning? <laughs> so uh, let me pause this real quick. And in the gameplay footage, I'm going to be showing you these uh, the builds too. All right, so you're gonna get a glimpse as I'm playing it because I I constantly try to remind myself to flash these builds at you. All right, but this is the build that you are watching right now. Okay, and so it's a again this is a layered system of protection. Now we need to talk. We're gonna be talking. Uh, the main subject is to making is making sure, and this is important, that you're doing your armor regen uh, correctly. Okay, and so and uh, there is a right or wrong with armor regen, and I'll I'll sort of tell you why. Um, I mean, I will tell you why uh, what the wrong is and why you you don't want to run it that way unless you're going to be a tank, right? But in these ones, I mean, of course you're a little bit tanky, but we are running and gunning out of cover, no shield. That's the goal. Are you with me there? No shield, out of cover. That's the goal. All right. And so if you guys, uh, just as a quick reminder, if you have questions that you would like me to answer, then make sure you hit up that uh, question before you start off your question that catches my eye because I have to go back and scroll through your comments and see who's got a question for me, all right? And I do try to get through everybody. Also, if you want to make sure your question gets answered, then hit the super chat uh, button which also helps the channel so I, I appreciate that all the donations there but uh, that also gets my attention and I make sure I answer your questions but okay so let's first get into the build and I'm going to explain why I have this build set up as it is first let's look at the stats okay so we're running uh, rounding up to 1.3 million armor all right the base regeneration now listen closely the base Regeneration on this build, the one that you watched in the gameplay, is 63,000. That's the base. Okay. It has a lot more than that in actuality. And let me explain why. So, first, that stat of 63,000 is not calculating Ridgeway's pride. So, just going off of one enemy bleeding, we're going to have 3% more armor regen okay so off of a million that's 30,000 all right so uh actually it's actually but we're at 1.3 so it's actually 40,000 so if you look here all right one enemy there's always gonna be one enemy bleeding all right we're gonna be at 100 100,000 armor regen right off the bat all right uh, let me just make sure I have this on private, by the way. I do. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Mike Oliver, welcome to the Players Club. Woo, woo. Players Club, welcome, Michael Oliver. Appreciate you, man. Thank you for supporting the channel. Props to you, man. First one of the night. Okay, so, um, so that's, think about that, okay? So, one enemy... Just one enemy, enemy bleeding. There's always going to be one enemy bleeding the way we're playing, okay? And you're going to see that. Puts us over 100,000 in armor regen. That's high. The reality is, is that there's usually more than one player bleeding. That's how you want to play. You want to play with, like, um, you know, if you, if you step up and there's three enemies around you, the first thing you should focus on is not killing that enemy. It's getting them all bleeding. All right. Anyways. Uh, and then that way you have two or three enemies bleeding. So... As you can see, it scales quite a bit. So it goes from three to six, six to 12. So with 12, with three enemies bleeding, which is happening a lot, that's 12%. So that's a hundred and, uh, I don't know what that is. A hundred and, uh, let's call it 130,000, give or take, uh, armor regen on top of the 60,000. So, you know, you're basically 200,000 armor regen. Okay. So that's that you get it. So that's why our stat is actually not reflecting the real deal. There's more. I'm not done. <laughs> so there's more. Okay. So base seals, 63,000. Uh, what did we say? I'm sorry. I already forgot the number. Base regen, 63,000. All right. And then one enemy. We'll, we're just going to go off of one enemy bleeding. Okay. Just We'll just use that as the base. So uh, add another. Uh, what did we say? It was 30. Um, 
35,000, we'll just call that. Okay, so 63 plus 35, so we're at 95,000, 98,000. All right, let's round that to 100,000, make it easy math for me. Uh, YouTube streaming math is hard, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> All right, and then we have healers going, okay? So what is armor regen? Armor regen is armor per second. What is the, let's just, let's just dummy that down for everybody. Heals per second, okay? So with the setup and one enemy bleeding, we got 100,000 heals per second. There's always gonna be one enemy bleeding. All right. Then we got the Seeker Mine, which is gonna give us another 26,000, 27,000 heals per second. So now we're at 100, let's call it 130. And then uh, with the Fixer Drone, another 25,000. Actually, let's, uh, let's round down, put those to 50,000 together. So we're at 150,000 heals per second without one enemy bleeding, okay? So that's a lot. What's also important to realize is that, what's even more important is that we got this adrenaline rush, okay? So adrenaline rush is part of the Invisia Shield system, right? So adrenaline rush is gonna give us 20% bonus armor when there's one enemy standing in front of us for, and it's gonna give us that for five seconds, okay? But that can get up to 60% bonus armor, but it doesn't matter. We have, we're have we gonna have a shield. That's an invisible shield that protects us from all angles, right? You guys know adrenaline rush. Really helpful, it's automatic, it just kicks in. And so because of Ridgeway's pride, we wanna step up to the enemy, right? We wanna get in that kill box and so, so that we get that bleed uh, healing us. And then Adrenaline Rush, what it's doing is it's giving us, it's buying us time. See, the bonus armor isn't gonna last very long, but the good news is that it, the cooldown is only five seconds. So when they wipe it, it comes back in five, in five seconds later, right? Or less usually. So um, what that does is that gives our heals basically time. It gives our armor regen time and our, and our repair skills time to heal ourselves as we're taking damage. Because we're out of cover, because we're not taking a shield with, along with us, right? We're always taking damage. We're always taking damage. So we need to always be healing at a massive rate. And so 20 there's no heals in the game that is gonna give you 20% armor passively, right? So you can get armor and kill. Let's, we'll talk about that too as we progress through these builds. But there's no heals in the game that's passively, meaning without killing somebody, gonna give you 20% armor. So uh, back per sec per second. So this is giving you 20% armor, bonus armor as a shield instantly. You understand? And so while that's there for only a few seconds, because sometimes it goes away really fast because you have a shit ton of enemies shooting at you, your heals are gonna be working behind the scenes to get your armor all the way back. And that's how we are able to literally get out of cover and stay out of cover, right? And play out of cover uh, and constantly take damage and survive. It's because we have heals that are always healing us at a rate that can keep up with the enemy. And then we have uh, the adrenaline rush give us a shield to buy our heals more time, right? And also gives us 20% uh, more armor instantly which means that is 20% damage that your actual armor, your standard armor, isn't taking. Does that make sense? Layered systems, layered systems. I guess that's what I want you to take away from here, right? Is that um, you basically need the bonus armor to, is, is like, it's another way of like supercharging your armor regen. That's how I use it for Invisible Shield, right? By protecting yourself, uh, by allowing your regen to, to um, uh, work uh, I'm getting my tongue all twisted up, but basically the bonus armor is allowing your regen to work without taking more damage Which means you just you're he gonna heal faster, right versus staying at that uh, low level of armor Anyways, uh, I think I saw somebody else jump in on the players club. Who was that? That was Barm Alays. Am I saying that right? Barma Lays. Am I saying that right? Uh, what's going on brother or sister? Welcome to the Players Club, True Bandito. All right, all right. That means you get access to the classified builds also. Uh, and as just uh, another quick reminder, uh, welcome, welcome to the Players Club uh, for everybody that just joined. And um, uh, uh, when you go to my YouTube channel at the very top, there's a, uh, a members only playlist. So you all have access to that if you're in the Players Club. 
and uh, what content uh, you get access to within that playlist is just going to differ depending on uh, what club level you are okay so just so you know with the gameplay footage basically i'm playing uh, a few control points with a certain build and then i'm going to change the build and along the way i'll show you what those build changes are okay so one of the things here which allows this uh, build to work and still put out damage is the fact that i'm using the chameleon so that allows me to min max the build right so I'm running 1.3 million armor and that's just enough armor to make me feel tanky. Notice like I basically didn't take any damage there, right? And that's Invisa Shield. That's what it's doing for you. And so, but you don't want too much bonus armor. Now that sounds weird because we love bonus armor, right? But you know, you know how these builds work, right guys? Like basically when you take away one thing or when you add one thing, you're taking away another. That's how builds work, right? You're using up a slot. And so when you're working in armor regen, you're taking away, when you're adding armor regen or bonus armor or armor, whatever it is, you're taking damage away from your build, right? And so you got, if you want to get out of cover and stay out of cover, then survivability is important. And the, the, one of the biggest things in the survivability equation is your time to kill. And so you have to preserve a really good time to kill. Otherwise, you just turn into a tank, a bullet sponge tank. And that build has a role also, you know? And so that's why it's important that you create your armor regen builds correctly. Otherwise, you're just gonna turn into a tank. And then that's just a different build. Instead of calling it a, an armor regen build, let's just call it what it is, a tank, right? Now these are all a little bit tanky. So again, 1.3 million armor is what we're running here, right? Okay, and so I have the Bellstone backpack, and so, um, as I mentioned, and uh, with the Adrenaline Rush, and like I said, is that you don't want too much bonus armor. We're just using the bonus armor as an invisible shield to give us a little bit of time for our regen to work. What you want to be doing is uh, solely surviving off of heals per second, okay? That's what you want to be doing. That's what's going to keep you alive. Heals per second and damage per second. DPS, right? Those are the two things. You've heard me say it a million times. It's not how much armor you have. It's how fast you heal, right? So the idea is we want to get our armor as low as we can, really. Okay? And so we don't really want to... If we go start going over 1.3 million, we're sort of tapping into a different type of build. So I'm making some changes here on the fly. And so basically, I'm bringing in more damage, Okay? And so I'm gonna put on this Bellstone chest piece with Intimidate, all right? So that's gonna give us 35% amplified damage. And now I'm running the Memento backpack. And the reason why I'm running the Memento black, blah, 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 backpack is because I want more damage, okay? So the Memento backpack is gonna give us 3% armor regen once we get all of our stacks. So that's where that's, that's gonna help. But what it's also giving us is on kill, we're gonna pick up a trophy. Right and on tro and on tro every trophy is going to give us five percent weapon damage per uh, core that we have, and um, we have one, two, three, four. Um, as you see here, we have four red cores, so we're going to get uh, five times four, which is twenty percent weapon damage bonus. We're also going to get bonus armor when we pick up that trophy, which is going to activate intimidate. Okay, and so. But you have to realize is that um, it's not going to last long, so you have to kill fast. And so that's why uh, the Chameleon is also going to kick in and help when we have Adaptive Instincts, um, you know, fully procked up, right? So Adaptive in Instincts has given us all the crit chance we need on the build. So we are at full crit chance, just so you know. Uh, we're at basically 55, 60% crit chance. Um, and then crit damage, I think, on this build... Uh, let me just look real quick. Um, we're basically between 80 and 100%. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 130% is where we are. Uh, between 80 and 130%. And that's when um, the uh, Adaptive Instincts kicks in. It's giving us 50% more crit damage. Okay. So what I want to mention is that what I see in some builds is that, and this is like, this is doing it wrong in my opinion, okay? And this is, you know, I'm open for dialogue here. So if you think different, I would love to hear. But what I see a lot is um, heavy reliance on these armor regen builds. I see heavy reliance on bonus armor. 
okay? And so what ends up happening, and this is what I see, is that what, what ends up happening is um, the bonus armor never goes away, right? From one kill to the next. So what ends up happening is like you pick up your, your trophy or maybe you're running Bloodsucker or even a really strong Adrenaline Rush uh, that has a, a lot of armor. And so you're staying alive, no doubt. That's a good thing. That is a goal, part of it, right? Which is to uh, play out of cover, stay alive. But what ends up happening is you have all this bonus armor the question is, is the armor regen ever working? And the answer is no, because you're never actually taking damage to your base armor. So, and that is what I mean by doing it wrong. So if you notice that your bonus armor is, is up, like, I don't know, like 60% of the time or more, whatever you're comfortable, whatever set you're comfortable with, that's subjective to you. But for me, I start re-looking at the build, right? I don't wanna see bonus armor on my build very often with armor regens. I only want to see it for a little bit, all right? I'm not saying bonus armor is bad. I love bonus armor. <laughs> but if the bonus armor is uh, up too much, then that means I don't need the regen. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So if you, if I have, okay, so I have bonus armor right now, okay, right? So if I have that bonus armor all the time, am I actually taking damage? And the answer is no. And if I'm actually, if I'm not taking damage, then do I even need regen? And the answer is no. And so would it be, wouldn't it be smarter just to roll in more damage? Do you see what I'm throwing down there? If you're gonna be relying on bonus armor, which happens most of the time on kill, then, you know, if you're using a memento, obviously, um, then just, you're, you're, you're wasting slots. You're wasting slots. You don't need armor regen. What you need is faster time to kill so you can get more bonus armor or so that you can utilize that bonus armor before it times out. Or, and that's how it works with Adrenaline Rush, right? So with Memento, it relies on a kill. So if you wanna rely on your bonus armor, then you have to have a really good time of kill. And I'm happy with the time of kill that we have in this build right now, actually. It's working really well. I like this build. Okay, and so I'm gonna uh, switch to it as we're talking here um, on my character, and then I'll, I'll walk you. I'll show. I'll make sure I give you guys another detail. But we're gonna be evolving, so um, and then we need to also uh, talk about the protection from, from elites that I'm running on this thing. Uh, that's playing in a very important role. All right, so let me pause this. Oh, yeah, I got it right. Let me pause this and show you the, the build real quick that you're seeing. Because I went, I'm changing it in the game and so, um, in the gameplay footage. And so I want to make sure you get a good chance to see this. So, so the first one had, was running a Bellstone uh, backpack and then it was running the Ridgeway's Pride chest piece. And so all I did for the, uh, the control point that you're seeing now is I swapped out Ridgeway's Pride and put on the Memento's backpack. So, again, Memento's giving us bonus armor 10% per armor core and we have three armor cores so we're getting 30 percent bonus armor that's healthy that's invisa shield but now what i've done is i've activated invisa shield to to be offensive so now when we're getting that that invisible shield that bonus armor that's giving us 35 percent weapon damage okay so that added and it's amplified that's amplified weapon damage is strongest damage in the game so that's coming in spurts basically it's coming in spurts but when we're chain killing stacks, like spawn killing, when we get in front of the door, like you saw a moment ago, then uh, it's sticking around for a while. But if the bonus armor is there the entire time, then I don't need Golan. I don't need this Murakami Industries um, Emperor's Guard knee pads because I don't need the regen, right? Yeah, the memento is when we got 30 stacks of those trophies, it's also giving us 3% armor regen. So if we look at the armor regen here, we got 63,000 base armor region, plus another 3%, which is gonna be 33,000. So this is 100,000 or 60, 90, 99,000. Yeah, it's 100,000 armor region on this build, right here, 100,000 armor region on this build when you pick up those trophies and you get the 30 stacks. On top of that, we got 30% bonus armor kicking in all the time, right? With a single trophy, 30% bonus armor. That's 30,000, oh, I'm sorry, that's 300,000. Uh, armor so that's pushing this armor to 1.6 million armor okay and so that's an invisible shield 
I hope that makes sense. But yeah, so this is what the build is, is looking like. Now remember, Adaptive Instincts is giving us all of our crits, so crit chance, crit damage. But more importantly, it's giving us that 90% weapon damage. I'm actually uh, relying on that more than the crits for this build, because that's basically gonna give us another six red weapon damage cores. It's equivalent to that damage. So we're gonna have 10 red weapon damage cores when Adaptive Instincts kicks in, which is really easy. All we need to do is get how many shots? 75 body shots. And then 30 headshots give us 20% crit chance plus 50% crit damage. So with this setup, we're, gonna, we're at 40 there. So we're gonna be at, I'm um, sorry, we're at 70 there. So we're gonna be at 120% uh, crit damage and we're gonna be max crit chance basically. So, but we're also running protection from elites. So protection from elites, protection from elites. That's a, uh, uh, some people love it, some people don't, okay? But basically the way I look at it for these builds is that armor regen alone um, is it can be great, right? Uh, but what protection from elites ultimately does, okay, is that it helps you not, it helps you have really, really powerful armor regen, basically, without having to roll a bunch of armor. So it takes away the requirement for armor. And that's because and I think it's it's basically it's even more powerful than armor the way I look at it the way I, and that's the reason why I like armor uh, protection from elites it's more powerful than armor and that's because um, you're diminishing the strongest enemies in the game you're diminishing their damage by in, in our case 60 percent right so the strongest enemies in the game and as you can see there's they're standing right in front of me right now and if you play heroic then you are facing mostly elites in heroic there's a lot more elites in the game than like if you were to play challenging or whatever right but like the whole second wave of control points and and look at this damage i'm taking right that's that's armor regen can't do that by itself okay and so that's also part of what i want to talk about why a layered system of armor regen is better than just straight up armor regen all right and now Otherwise, would it end up and in order to get your regen as fast as I as strong as I have it here And I'm not even sure you can to be honest with you. I think you'd have to run four piece bulwark um, With Ridgeway's pride on top of that and then run max armor on top of that So again now all of a sudden you're a tank build Right And you're not putting out as much damage as you want to so if you want to be out of cover without a shield and be a DPS armor regen no shield build right then you need to make sure that you leverage your system smartly so that you can um uh better utilize the slots on your build so armor regen alone can't do what this build has shown you that it can do it needs you need to have a layered system so protection from elites is basically saving me from having to run a shitload of armor on my build without protection from elites i'd have to put a lot of armor and i don't want a lot of armor on my build Remember, it's not how much armor you have, it's how fast you can recover. And protection from elites, you just gotta twist your head a little bit on how you think about protection from elites, right? It, basically, look at it this way. It's like putting your heal, it's like putting your armor regen on overdrive because your armor regen doesn't have to work as hard. So your armor regen doesn't have to work as hard, which means the idea is in a perfect world, right? In a perfect world, you can stand in one spot and heal as fast as the damage is coming in, right? You can heal as fast as this damage. Uh, and that's what uh, Protection from Elites allows you to do. And that's part of a, a really good Invisible Shield system is having either uh, your Protection from Elites, depending on how you want to look at it, uh, boost your armor regen or diminish the, uh, the pains, uh, the damage that's coming in. Same thing, just a different way of looking at it. All right, all right, let's make sure I get these questions. Um, I did see one, uh, I'm gonna scroll back here, so let me, uh, so I can make sure I get a lot of these questions. If I miss you, I'm so, I apologize, but if you feel like it's important or you didn't get an answer, then definitely um, don't be afraid to drop the question again and start it with question. Uh, that helps it kind of stand out. But, and please make sure it's related to the topic. <laughs> Not the topic, uh, it could be a little outside, but uh, to, uh, stream and helpful for other folks that are also in the stream. 
Uh, let's see here. And you guys are always really good about that, so I'm not I'm not picking on anybody. Calvin Bowser says, too many imitators on Armor Region out there lying. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And then there's a lot that they don't show you um, that, you know, some some um, builders might not show you or kind of go into the details because Armor Regen really weakens your build. It's actually really hard to run Armor Regen on builds. It's not easy because, I mean, it's ultimately what you're, what is your goal, right? Because you're using up slots on your build, serious slots, right? I mean, let me look, just look at this build real quick. Like, so Bellstone right is bringing this one percent armor regen and then i replace it with the weapon damage um core because it normally comes with armor because i don't want too much armor i don't want armor right if i had it my way i'd eliminate all this armor except in order for invisible shield to work we need a little bit of armor to work so 1.3 million is a little on the higher side for me my comfy place is about 1.1 million that's that's you know a good balance for me so this is a little on the tankier side, and that's so that we can drive that bonus armor here. So when I pick up those those uh, mo those uh, trophies, I get that bonus armor, and I want it to last longer, even though it might be a fraction of a second, because I want Intimidate to last longer. So that's that's the point of that. But I uh, also got these really special knee pads, and you guys uh, saw me get these um, uh, yesterday or the day before. And I got these from a named item cache. And so I've been preaching to you guys to, to uh, purchase those named item caches. And this is exactly the, the kind of thing that you can get out of them. And they're actually really rare. Now I'm not talking about Emperor's Guard knee pads. I have a bunch of Emperor's Guard knee pads. I probably have seven pair. But um, the ones with armor regen already on them is actually really rare. Uh, I, this is the first pair that I've gotten with armor regen already on them. And I've been playing this game for forever. Look at my watch, right? Not the highest in the game, but high enough to say that I've been playing uh, without pause, basically. So anyways, so this could be crit damage here. This could be uh, uh, a Providence or whatever. This could be more damage. This is uh, a golem gear too. I'm running two pieces so I can have 1% armor regen. So it's, it's there and it's there, right? And then I have armor regen everywhere, right? Basically on every piece, as you can see, armor regen on every piece, including my mask. And I got double protection from elites there. That's why I'm running the chill out mask so I can uh, get my uh, protection from elites, as you can see, to 61%, which is really high. 50% is a comfortable place. 61% lets you play out of cover even longer. 80% is max, okay? So uh, all of these things are working together. In exchange, I can stand in front of the boss and take all of his pain, the all of his pain, you know, and... Um, and then so I, for here, I originally had crit damage here, but I, I put on repair skills just to juice that, those a little bit because um, I realized that, you know, the adaptive instincts is gonna give me all the damage that I need once it kicks in. So you're gonna feel a little bit weak without adaptive instincts and intimidate. So if you don't have intimidate and you don't have uh, adaptive instincts, you're gonna feel a little bit weak, feel a little bit weak. And you'll see that that's why in the build and the gameplay that that's why I'm, um, uh, I, you'll see me building stacks. You can tell when I'm kind of focusing on building my stacks. You know, I'll focus on an enemy for a second, kind of, uh, and let uh, try to build my my stacks on him as much as possible, and then and then move on and start tackling everybody if I, uh, head first, basically. <laughs> but my point is, is that if you're not run, if you're not using your armor regen uh, correctly, then you're better off just running damage in all of these slots. That's my point. You know. If I if I was living just off of bonus armor, all right, like I see a lot of builds do, I see these armor regen builds out there, and I'm like, they're not even using the armor regen. <laughs> it's rare. It's rare that they're using the armor regen. I, I see them, I see them relying on their bonus armor. And if you're relying on if you see a lot of bonus armor on an armor regen build, it's just like, well, why do they have armor regen? They might as well just spec all that armor regen into damage and then get that bonus armor more often you know and so be careful how much of a crutch you use and i'm not saying don't use bonus armor i'm just saying that you need to pick you need to pick and the bonus armor for an invisible shield build is a layered system so i need bonus armor for this build right i need it to drive intimidate but i'm not always relying on intimidate because i have adaptive instincts and so it's both of those together make me feel like a god with the power you know and yes 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 an armor a max armor regen build 
like this, if you want to play out of cover without a shield, you are losing damage, right? This isn't the strongest DPS build in the game. No way, you know, but what it allows you to do, and you'll see here in a second, this is going to be crazy. So focus, focus, focus on this gameplay because this is going to be crazy. <laughs> this gameplay footage here. So, uh, cause I, I get blindsided by some enemies and then I just go, what? <laughs> and then you'll see I survive through it and that's an ambitious shield build. All right. And so I am playing a little bit crazy like this. Like I, I mean, obviously I could jump in the cover earlier, but I'm trying to show you what, what this build can do. All right. So I got full memento stacks. All right. And I'm playing out of cover, taking bullets. You, we got to realize is I'm taking uh, shots and flamethrowers from the back also. So I am taking 360 degrees of damage. Look, a spawn just happened behind me. Now I have the DPS. I have the DPS. You see that? So that's important. Now the bonus armor is what's giving me a uh, time for my heals to kick in because I took real damage. So it's giving me that. And at the same time, it's giving me more damage output. Look at this. This is godly, guys. This is godly. This is a beautiful build, right? So build one was really tanky, but um, you know, this is build 1.5, basically. Um, and again, uh, we just changed two pieces, the backpack and the chest. Uh, so we took away Richard's pride and it gives us a lot more damage, ultimately is the deal. We're getting 35% more, um, what do you call it, amplified damage. And then we're getting all the damage every time we pick up the trophy, right? And then we're getting, uh, and so that's what happened. So we replaced a lot of defense with a lot of damage just by moving two, two pieces. So we killed that boss really easy, all right? So 23, 28, let me scroll back just so you, I need you to see that boss. So let me just scroll back to uh, this part. Watch that boss kill and pay attention to the details on what's active, okay? So adaptive instincts uh, is gonna, so I got one of the adaptive instincts kicked in here. Um, and then we're gonna uh, pick up that trophy, boom. I'm not only getting bonus armor, I'm getting more damage, okay? That trophy, because we got four red cores. So I get 20% more damage when I pick up that thing. So I build my stacks on her face, and now I'm focused on my ch on her chest. So that's what I want you to see. So I'm building up adaptive instincts. Okay, now the boss comes in. So I have the crits. So I'm focusing on his chest so I get the weapon damage. Boom. We just got 90% more weapon damage. Watch him die. I'm out of cover. No, no, don't need cover. Right? That's Invisible Shield. He died really fast as soon as I got those headshots in. So, not bragging, I'm just saying that this build is laid out smartly. Okay? It's, it's a layered system. And those adaptive instincts, you know, the shame is that the adaptive instincts kind of come and go, right? So, because they expire, they last 45 seconds, which is a long time. But, you know, when you're running out of cover and you're standing there exposed and vulnerable, then you notice when they go away. But the good news is that we still got Intimidate kicking in, and then we still have all the damage, 30% weapon damage from 30 stacks, and plus 20% every time we pick up a trophy, all from the Memento, all right? And the protection from Elites allows us, our armor regen, to not have to work as hard. So I'll put, in other words, it puts our armor regen on overcharge, and then we're getting 30% skill efficiency, and then also 5% uh, more skill efficiency every time we pick up a trophy. So that's putting our heals on overdrive also, overcharge, not literally, but making them stronger, right? So that's why it's a, what I say, it's a smartly laid out build. This is one you need to have in your arsenal if you love Invisa Shield armor regen builds. This is a really good armor regen build. Not too tanky, not too DPS-y. <laughs> that's not a real word. But um, also notice I am running the, um, Survivalist, I like Survivalist. It's giving me 10% armor regen, but it's also giving me this Mender Seeker. And I did see somebody have a question uh, about the Mender Seeker and um, uh, whether it's passive, and it is, it is passive. So when you're solo, it's really handy because it's always there for you, healing you. When you are playing in group, just realize that it also goes out and heals up your group from time to time. So it might not be there when you ultimately need it. So just keep that in mind. You can also use a chem. So in group situations, just put on the chem launcher, the healer chem launcher, and then give yourself a quick squirt if you need it. Oh, Thoden Thorson. You're hitting me from the Couve. All right, brother. Yeah, Vancouver. Just as rainy. <laughs> Congratulations. 
Dispatch, Soggy Northwest would be perfect in the next division game. It actually would. <laughs> Just a lot of, de that'd be the faction, like a bunch of depressed anarchists. Um, what are they called? Um, I just drew a blank on the name, but uh, there's the, um, you know, they were they were in the riots a lot, kind of instigating things. Um, totally drew a blank on their name, but the anarchist group. Um, it has something to do with fascists, um, like anti-fascist Antifa. That's the word. <laughs> Antifa. They could Antifa could actually be. Uh, a faction, right? You're fighting the Antifa. That would be fucking hilarious in Portland. <laughs> Not that we're the capital of Antifa, but it just uh, the media like to make it look like we had a lot of Antifa here. But uh, funny. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm scrolling for questions here, so I appreciate you guys' the patience there because I got a lot to talk about with Armor Regen, uh, especially as I'm showing you a lot of builds. Uh, yeah, Heart of Awesomeness knows what we're talking about. He says, "Good old Invisi Shield." Uh, Stephen H says, yeah, I'm not an explosives build guy. I mean, uh, Stephen H mentioned that, uh, that, yeah, the global event right now is just not my favorite. I'm not playing it. Um, here's a good little fight sequence. Watch the survivability here. Uh, notice I'm going for weak points and then I start stacking. But anyways, um, I don't, I'm just not a fan of Hollywood. It just makes these guys tankier than they already are. And they're already really tanky. I mean, look at the pain I can take. Look at the pain guys. I mean, just look at that. The one thing I don't like, by the way, if you're playing like this, like I am, try to avoid their um, their melee attacks. They actually take a lot of damage, those melees. Those melees hit hard. Um, remember, their bullets are in the millions. So I'm taking millions of damage. You know, so... Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a, hell of a, that's a hell of a scene right there, guys. Uh, taking on four elites. Um... And that's where protection from elites uh, really helps. It really helps the armor regen. Um, so I'm fighting the, the boss out of cover. Uh, a lot of that, it's, it's not just a prote protection from elites all by itself, guys, sucks. Um, it does. You need to have heals to go along with it. Okay, so protection from elites, yes, it diminishes the pain, but if you don't have heals to go with it, you can't play out of cover. So then you might as well not use it. Okay, so if you want to use protection from elites, you need to have really good heals. Um, protection from elites just doesn't work by itself. I mean, of course, it diminishes the pain that's coming from those elites, but you know, you still got to pop an armor kit pretty quickly because they hit in the millions. They hit in the millions, so it only works with really good healing system to go along with it. So, and sometimes the memento itself can be strong enough if you're playing from cover. But since we're playing out of cover without a shield, which is a very special way to play, then you need really good heals. Eclipse 27 made a 2 million armor 86 armor regen build. Oh, that's really good, Eclipse. Actually, uh, we're going to be showing something like that as well. So you do want to stick around for all the builds that I'm going to show you because they are all unique enough. And the last build I have is a full armor build. And um, I'm going to show you, you know, and I, you have to bring things in balance so if we bring in more armor then that means we also need to bring in more damage because we took damage away does that make sense so i show you how i balance it but uh yeah that's really cool eclipse curious on how you balance your build rogue agent 007 what up what up welcome jason says i'm running 1.9 million uh with 60k armor regen not done building yet so still need those emperor guard knee pads yeah i hear you hopefully you get lucky these are a really good pair um, I was literally uh, one of the only things I was farming for with those named item caches. I'm now there's, I'm down to my last piece of gear from named item caches that I need, which is what uh, what I'm looking for is a um, I'm looking for the death grips with uh, crit damage already on them so that I can roll the uh, into a weapon damage core. Because so I get the 10 um, percent armor on kill without having too much armor. Cause I don't like having too much armor and if I'm running the death grips with the memento backpack then that already puts me at 1.1 million armor and then you know I'm limited in what other pieces I can put on that build because uh, I'm, they, those might come with armor also so anyways 
Um, yeah, I'm down to uh, that one piece with my named item caches, and then I'm gonna uh, slow roll my farming named item caches. But Calvin Bowser says, I can't wait till they fix the chill out mask. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, apparently it's a bug. So you should be getting the brand set bonuses with it, um, uh, which we're not. And so if, if, if that were, were, was working, we'd have 5% more armor right now on this build. Yeah, the Lady Death would be good. What I don't like about the Lady Death is that all the reloading, because it's got a small mag, and so I'm not a big fan of that. Um, but the Lady Death would also work for this setup. Uh, and I also like, actually, um, that... I like the 90% weapon damage that this thing is coming with, um, um, but also the crits on top of that. So you get the crits on top of that. So, you know, so I, I like that system, the way that system is working. But amplified damage from Lady Death, no doubt, is a strong build. But as you notice, it's not actually used in PvE a lot, uh, right? And the question is, why not? Um, and as Jason's pointing out, he uses it in the DZ, right? And so the reason why is because you deal with the hordes of enemies and so you really don't want to be reloading that much um and pvp you're not dealing with as many enemies a couple three four enemies right but i mean a control point has like 50 enemies i mean i do i notice on um on certain guns like the falsa like the air that assault rifle the falsa para uh if i'm saying that right that's got a smaller mag. It's only got 40 in the mag where other assault rifles can have 50. And so um, I noticed that extra reloading and it irritates me and it's a great gun. So Daniel Tremblay says, well, I'm using your build since six months and I call it the summon build because I play solo legendary in the summit with it. Yeah, you must be using the Invisi Shield system, right? Uh, maybe with, are you using an SMG with that one? Uh, maybe the Dark Winter, or uh, um, or uh, actually, I might have put Sadist on it and played off the Bleed from Original Pride. Some of my favorite builds. Really like those builds. There it is. Stephen Clinton asks is if the Seeker Mine is automatic. Uh, so I'm I'm running the Seeker Mine that's giving me that green, uh, that juice off the ground. If you see it, that halo. So that's the Seeker Mine, and it is automatic. So it, it like squirts you every few seconds or so. So, uh, and it's actually pretty strong heals. And so, and remember every trophy and when we stack up our trophies on our backpack, those heals are getting stronger. So this build evolves. It's an evolving build. It gets stronger and stronger, but look at the, I mean, it's killing well. It's killing really well and it's imbalanced. Now I'm not saying it's the strongest DPS build. Oh, I did make a change. I'm sorry guys, did I not call out that change? Okay, I'm gonna show you what the change is in a second. Um, let me uh, pull it up on my character here while this is happening. Okay, so this is the change that I made. Let me show you. I'm not sure if I showed it in the gameplay footage. I did. I'm pretty sure, but I probably went really quickly and I didn't talk about it. So I made a quick change in the build, okay? So before we were running uh, in Intimidate, right? We had um, this chest piece here, okay? And so what I changed is to the one on the right. So the one on the left is what we were running on the last control point, which worked really well and I loved it. But what I did was move to the one on the right, which is nice. So I lost a little bit of armor regen. Okay, and I'm losing amplified damage, but what I'm gaining is obliterate. Uh, get a little bit of headshot damage too, but um, for that 25% weapon damage. So it's less than intimidate, but it's gonna be active all the time. So it's sort of law of averages here. And so that's what I'm playing off of. Both are fine, okay? But obliterate is, I guess, uh, a safer rate, safer route. Um, and then, uh, the crit chance and crit damage would be ultimately the same. So we're not, uh, again, all the power is coming from adaptive instincts and then the, the backpack memento. But um, that's, you know, that's the big change there. And so I'm playing into laws of averages basically now, uh, instead of having big, strong bursts of damage, which is working, which worked great for me. I'm um, standing here on purpose so you guys can see how well it, it handles this guy's pain. He's really tanky, right? Really tanky. Um, but, 
uh, so that that's what that does. So it's just basically a more consistent level of damage instead of it coming in uh, shorter but more impactful spurts. So. Yeah, Hunter's Fury slaps hard. Now Hunter's Fury is the opposite of what an armor regen like you don't want to add armor regen on a hunter's fury build now if you're using a memento with hunter's fury I, I get it it's gonna come with it but hunter's fury is a build that relies on um the fastest heals in the game which is armor on kill right because you get 20 percent armor on kill just from using hunter's fury and so you don't need regen with that it would be redundant um you're better off just adding more armor on kill or bonus armor to protect you um, in certain situations, but, um, but yeah, that's a, a really good build. It's a different way of playing. Definitely. Uh, I mean, you can still play out of cover and whatever, but you're relying more on damage. It's Hunter's Fury is basically built off of the principle of time to kill, right? If you don't have a good time to kill, then you're not going to survive with Hunter's Fury. And so that's what makes Hunter's Fury really well. And you have to spec around that build differently. Um, but it's a really balanced build set. And so there's not much you have to do to it, just play it as it lies. <laughs> you know, um, the question is, you know, do crits or not crits? It's uh, Hunter's Fury doesn't really rely on crits, it relies on amplified damage. So crits are okay if you're using an SMG, but if you're using a shotgun, I don't recommend it with a Hunter's Fury build because you don't have enough slots to make it super impactful. <laughs> I saw your comment there, Dispatch, about um, you commented to somebody else, another content creator about their armor regen build and they didn't think Richard's pride is is armor regen huh what is it because <laughs> when i read it it says armor regen on the on the talent right there it says you get three percent armor regen six percent armor regen it literally says armor regen but uh um some so the armor regen for uh is on is on both uh, exotics, right? It's on the memento, you get 3%. And it's on Ridge's Pride, and you can get up to basically 50%, right? So both of them are situational uh, in the sense of with, with the memento, um, A, it's not as much, but also you have to have 30 stacks. So if you don't have your 30 stacks, then whatever. <clears throat> but both the memento and Ridge's Pride both give you offense and defense, right? Because Ridge's Pride gives you crits as well on top of the armor regen, and it's an all red piece. So um, it's, it brings all the offense and then a ton of defense. I love pieces like that. They give you both the yin and the yang. And so Ridge is pro I mean, and the memento does the same thing. It gives you an armor core, a weapon damage core, of course, a yellow skill tier. And then it gives you armor regen, bonus armor on top of weapon damage. And, you know, uh, so it brings all offense into defense. So both are good and neither of them are situational in our builds. The reason why is because, uh, we are playing close. Um, and so, uh, in close quarters, so right here, for example, Ridge's Pride would be kicking in. We'd be basically be invulnerable against her, um, which we're basically are now anyways, but we'd be even stronger with, uh, Ridge's Pride, I believe. But the thing about the Memento is it's also charging up our skills, which are healing us at the same time. So I'm sorry, I'm just scrolling through your comments here. I'm making sure I didn't uh, miss any important question. Uh, Axion recommends perfect bloodsucker and backfire. Actually, I thought about doing a backfire. Backfire would work with this build concept too, okay? So the only reason why I'm not running backfire, just so you know, is because then I'd have to... Backfire, unfortunately, doesn't come with all your crit uh, chance on it. So you'd end up having to um, add more crit chance um, to your build. And I didn't want to waste uh, slots on it, but you would uh but it also works and then also you'd have you'd also have to roll a bunch of hazard protection and so which would eat up all my regen slots so regen builds um don't work really good with the backfire because you end up losing all your slots to hazard protection and then a little bit to crit chance so there's not much left after that but and so that's why i didn't use it uh because i would be kind of diminishing the build a little bit watering it down and end up more of a tank but it, that but that's another way to go it's not a bad build it's just different so bruce campbell says i use protection from elites in my glass cannon build yeah awesome use for that bruce 
awesome use for that. It makes the glass not so glassy, right? It's a different way of thinking, and not everybody thinks that way. And I like the way you thought about it. So, um, you know, that's that's a really smart use of it. I do that too, by the way. But uh, appreciate the shout out there, Calvin Bowser, uh, as being one of your favorite um, uh, builders, and uh, also shout out to Mob too. This is a nice guy. Jay Wilsey has a question for me. What's the best way to like and subscribe? And the best way is to not forget. <laughs> the best way to like and subscribe is to not forget. Uh, as a quick reminder from Jay Wilsey, uh, uh, please hit that like button right now and subscribe if you haven't. And also join Texas Players Club. Um, and Texas Players Club, if you didn't know, um, I serve up classified and secret builds uh, and yet for uh, Texas Players Club. And you have to be a true or hardcore bandito member level to get access. And um, these are exit builds I make as a thank you for supporting me and the channel and the entire community because that's what I do is I support the community. So support the cause. Click the join button right now. And I'll also drop a link for you here um, in case you don't see the join button. The join button is um, if you're on a PC or a computer, it's right underneath uh, the, the video. But if you're on your phone, it doesn't show up so easy. You actually have to go to my channel to uh, hit the join button. Um, but so I dropped these uh, little links for you to make make it easier for you guys to find that. But appreciate that, Jay Wilsey. Okay, so I'm making a few changes here, and then I'm going to revert one of the changes. But uh, so I'm putting back on intimidate onto this uh, chest piece for the chest piece instead of uh, obliterate, um, and uh, it is the moment. I mean the um, uh, the bellstone chest piece. And then the, notice the crit chance, crit damage there. And then protection from elites is going to go up a little bit. But notice the armor regen at 67,000. So, um, but I decided I'm, I'm using Walker and Harris here for a second, but I'm actually going to switch that. And then I'll show you what I end up going with. And you know, I, I look at and, and then I will uh, spec in more damage in, in the next build after this, so you can see what that looks like too, um, as a, a comparison, but say, true to the same concept. Um, Calvin Bowser says the, uh, that the Chameleon is the best assault rifle in the game. Who agrees with that? Should we do a poll? Oh wait, real quick. Uh, I want to show you the heels. So twenty six thousand plus 25,000 so we're basically 52,000 off the heels right here right here and then I'm gonna rethink that backpack so um, yeah we're gonna go with Bellstone instead think about that for a second okay so that's gonna be more crits more armor regen and then I'm gonna run off adrenaline rush so the reason why we want adrenaline rush all right is because more damage instant damage so um remember intimidate intimidate is the strongest heals in the game right but what i decided instead of five percent measly little weapon damage i wanted ten percent armor on kill okay and so that's that's um a good example of an invisible shield uh concept slash thought process right so what's more impactful for your survivability? 5% weapon damage from uh, Walker and Harris, you know, for the perfect adrenaline rush also, or 10% armor on kill. Because 10% armor on kill um, is basically like putting your, your armor regen on overdrive. You know what I'm saying? So... That's, that's why you want 10% armor and kill. This is an armor regen build, but if you have a little bit of uh, armor on kill, then it's like, it allows you to take more damage because as you kill, you refill your heals faster, right? So it's a blended concept. So I'm gonna show you the build again in a second here. I'm equipping it on my character. Okay, so let's just flop over here real quick. So here's a build that I'm running right now. Okay, so I'm still at 1.3 million armor. 
All right, but I lost the memento and instead I'm using this bell stone and that's because um, We're getting adrenaline rush lasts longer. It sticks around longer and if that's lasting longer that means we're getting more Amplified damage. So I switched back to intimidate Instead of obliterate so before we were running obliterate and then I decided to go back to intimidate because that's really strong That's really strong guys. And so crit damage armor regen Crit damage armor regen and now we got 10% armor on kill with adrenaline rush <coughs> so adrenaline rush is giving us that invisible shield so that all this armor regen so we got 70,000 or it's called 68,000 armor regen okay so and then plus 27,000 plus 25,000 so that's uh, 52,000 so 52,000 plus 70,000 right um so that's basically 130,000 or 120,000. So we got 120,000 heals per second. So then we get 20% bonus armor at least on top of that, right? Plus protection from elites at 61%. So the the bonus armor and protection from elites is helping our armor regen. It's like putting our armor regen on overdrive because it's protecting us from damage so that our armor regen can heal at its full rate. And that's what allows us to get out of cover and take damage at the same time. And then we now got Intimidate, so we've turned that defense into an offense. So that's the thought process behind that. Just wanted to share that with you real quick. What up, Bruce Campbell? Did I say what's up to you earlier? Not. How you doing, man? Great. You're uh, glad you're appreciating the clinic, my man. It's a complicated subject, armor regen. It really is. Um, I mean, for tank builds, it is what it is. You know, you just want to have a lot of it on a tank build, and uh, that helps you stay out of cover. But with tank builds, you know, guys, it's usually, you know, you sort of have to make a decision with your tank builds. Like, if you want to be a god tank that can, uh, that can take a lot of heat, you need to decide. You know, do I want an infinitely um an impenetrable shield that never dies or do i want an impenetrable body right and the shield is more practical for a tank build to build an impenetrable uh shield and so you do need to protect your body a little bit but even if you had like two uh you know two million armor on your body you know the uh, heroic or legendary uh content is going to clean that in a split second it doesn't matter how much armor you have in this game it literally doesn't. Five million armor. It doesn't matter. They're going to kill you just as fast. So again, it's not about how much armor you have. It's about how fast you recover. Armor regen alone isn't strong enough to allow you to do what I'm doing. Right? Face taking the boss without a shield. Playing out of cover infinitely. Right? So I do pop into cover for short periods of time just as a smart player. But my, uh, my purpose is to strictly play out of cover. So, I mean, they're like, this room is really hot right now, right? There's a lot of heat. Got turrets, got dudes from all angles, basically. But I survive. Not always, but for the most part. I mean, have I gone down yet? No, and this is continuous gameplay footage, unedited. <coughs> I don't think I've gone down yet, right? I do go down in one mission because um, uh, my wife came in the room as I was playing. <laughs> she stood right in front of the TV. I was like, damn it. <laughs> I was like, I can't see, and I'm recording. <laughs> but it wasn't her fault. She didn't know. Uh, group of unknowns. Group of unknowns. What's up, my man? He goes, what's poppin' Tux? Have you tried a four-piece bulwark with armor and crit hole damage rolled on every piece? Uh, perfect intimidate with adrenaline rush to, or obliterate vigilance. Yeah, you know what? Uh, group of unknown. That's actually a really classic build. Um, it's basically, I think that was kind of really, that really was popular right when bulwark was released which is when iron horse was released but yeah four piece bulwark with um a perfect intimidate which is um the hunter killer chess piece that's the golden gear chess piece and um adrenaline rush on the backpack um you know whether you use the uh perfect version or not i don't think really matters that much but 
Yeah, no, that's really good. It's really good. Uh, it's super tanky, though. It's really tanky. Maybe it's sort of too tanky for my taste. So, actually, what I ran earlier, and I decided not to showcase it, and the reason why is because I wanted to be consistent with the knee pads, and so I'm sort of showcasing the knee pads here a little bit, the Murakamis, uh, just because I'm so excited because I just got them on Thursday. So, um... So that's sort of why I'm doing it. And if I if I if I run four piece of bulwark, then I can't use my Murakami knee pads because then I'd have to run a bulwark chest or backpack, which is not a problem. I just don't like doing that a lot because I know a lot of you guys don't have the chest and backpack bulwark. So I don't do a lot of those builds. But um, they are uh, definitely a great build. I actually like the bulwark. I like using the bulwark as as it's not intended. I feel like it's stronger that way. So you guys, uh, question for you, quick question is uh makeshift repairs are you guys familiar with makeshift repairs uh that's what bulwark provides right is makeshift repairs um is that armor regen or repair skills look at what it says whenever you or your shield take damage 20 percent of that amount is repaired over 15 seconds so has anybody told you that makeshift repairs is armor regen? If they did, uh, that's incorrect. Makeshift repairs is not armor regen. Okay, it's sort of it's it's sort of its old its own thing. But the truth is, is it's 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 more on the side of repair skills. And I'm not just saying that because it says repairs in there literally, uh, even though that is one kind of clue. But the truth is, is that okay? Armor regen. There's one thing that is very consistent about armor regen. Its strength is literally dependent on how much armor you have, okay? So if you have 2 million armor, your armor regen is gonna be greater. You're gonna get more armor regen per second than if you only had 1 million armor. We're talking about 1% armor regen, 2% armor regen, 3% armor regen, right? You see that there? So for three pieces, you got 1% armor regen. And so if you have 2 million armor, you can get more armor regen than if you only had 1%, 1%, 1 million armor. So, but makeshift repairs is more like repair skills. Now, if you look at repairs, healing, 25,000 heals per second. You see that there on the right? So it doesn't say anything about armor. It has nothing to do with armor. If I had six red cores or six blue cores, one million armor or two million armor, none of that's going to matter. I'm always going to get 25,000 heals per second. Right? Armor regen is 1% armor regen is strictly tied to how much armor you have. So by 1 million, I'm gonna get 10,000. If I got 2 million, I'm gonna get 20,000 heals per second, armor back per second, all right? So makeshift repairs, look closely. It has nothing to do with how much armor you have. It has everything to do with how much damage you take. Whenever you or you shall take damage, you get 20% of that damage back over 15 seconds. So that's why I was like, well, shit, I don't need any armor to get 20%. I'm still going to get 20% of that damage. I'm still going to get 20% of that damage no matter how much armor I have or do not have. So notice this is all red, right? And yeah, here's a sneak preview out of build coming to you guys, right? Look at that. Boom. Boom. Why do you need armor with Foundry? You don't. Do you need armor? Look at that. So I don't have my fourth piece here, but... I think it's in my, uh, the reason why I don't is because I'm running those Mercom and knee pads. But let me show you a glimpse, a little preview of a build here coming at you in the future. But it's going to be a strong armor regen, but you don't need, there we go. Did I have a fourth? Sorry, let me take another look here. Sneak preview here. Here it is. Uh, either one of these, this one would work too, but I'll just show you this one. You need a little bit of armor to help uh, stay out of cover, but... Look at that. So look at that. So the reason why you want uh, six red cores or five or six, whatever you end up going with, is because when you pick up one of these trophies, it gives you a big burst of damage. That's why you don't want to lose uh, red cores, especially with 
the memento because of that short-term buff weapon damage five percent per red core you see that right there in the middle so if i the more red cores the stronger my build is so um then so i would actually probably run it just like i mean you could actually go be interesting you know it would be interesting yeah i mean this is an interesting case for uh for ridges but i'm running the memento so i'm not going to do that but um let me find this one so one two three four and then i um i'm giving you guys a hot little build right here guys this is actually a hot build let me grab this other uh because this is how it actually run it so move that over it's a hot build on the fly there's a little bonus build for you guys um i'm actually going to release this build i just there's a, i got a bunch of things i'm working on unfortunately but i want to show you what this looks like so this is hot guys and it's because this is you have to inter you have to understand makeshift repairs to realize how hot this is okay so excuse the silence as i'm putting this together but it's going to be worth it because this is hot and you know, the only reason why i didn't stick this build in here because it, it, it is an armor regen it belongs in this category even though it's not true armor regen the reason why it's not in here is because i was showcasing those murakamis here in all of these builds it's that one piece is very consistent in all these builds so but i'm not without that being my limiter i can run four piece makeshift so look so now we get 20 percent of that damage any damage that we take uh back to us over 15 seconds that's huge that's huge guys because our enemies hit in the millions the damage that they deal to us is greater than any armor regen you could ever ever put on your build okay so on top of that we have one percent armor regen from having three pieces right and then we're getting another three percent armor regen from the backpack right so right there four percent armor regen and then the chest piece is giving us another one percent armor regen five percent armor regen so it's showing well the backpack doesn't show here so unfortunately we're gonna have to do uh, the math in our head but so what is that that is um i think that's is that gonna be five uh I'm sorry i'm gonna have to put my it's getting that hour apparently but i'm thinking it's five thousand right so um fifty thousand so 50,000 armor regen. I don't know why I could do that math in my head. 50,000 armor regen and then make shift repairs on top of that. Okay. So that's going to be a lot of healing. Um, unfortunately, it's like a whole nother video. <laughs> so it's going to be its own build video. And then if we want to run heals on top of that, cool. Um, but uh, this is really cool. And then we, every time we pick up a trophy, we're going to get a full 30% weapon damage bonus. And so let's look at where we're crits. So this build is gonna crit at 100, so that's 130 plus 50% from Adaptive Instinct. So we're at 180% crit damage. That's respectable. That's really respectable. And then we're gonna get the 25% uh, more weapon damage from Obliterate. But what else, guys? We're gonna get 90% weapon damage from Adaptive Instincts. Adaptive Instincts. That's like having 12 weapon damage cores. 12 weapon damage cores with this right plus when we pick up another trophy we're gonna get another two weapon damage cores equivalents right so this build when you pick up a single trophy uh and, oh, and then where we're fully stacked is another two so basically this build is giving us 12 13 14 15 six it's equivalent to having 16 weapon damage cores basically and then you add obliterate on top of that which is like almost two 18 so it's like having 18 weapon damage cores basically if you look at it that way right you see what i'm saying but this will be a really cool build uh, probably the only thing i would uh change i may uh i would probably actually run this uh with um gunner so that ammo is not an issue ammo is an issue with armor regen builds by the way is or and also any chameleon build i feel like uh ammo becomes an issue with the chameleon because it's got a 900 rpm so when you when you miss shots at 900 rpm you you, you burn a lot of ammo when you miss shots too and we don't miss a lot uh, because we are uh, stepping pretty close to the enemies, but you do miss shots. And then also, um, the um, time to kill is going down a little bit, so you're using more ammo that way too, right? 
but anyways uh, all of these are actually really good builds and i couldn't decide which is ultimately my favorite because they were all pretty fun this one did pretty good um the other one where i was fighting at the nest which is when we we're using um uh, obliterate bellstone with obliterate that one and the memento backpack when we were fighting at the nest so you could uh if you're watching this uh, later go back to the nest fight where we're at the nest um and i'm running the bellstone with obliterate on the chest and then um i'm running the memento backpack everything else is the same really good that was a really good build so but this one is definitely a ton of fun too So I still got the protection from elites. I think that's really helping. I think that goes miles. Protection from elites is like doubling, tripling your armor, I feel like, because all these guys are elite. It's rare. The other guy, the non-elites are non-issues, right? They just die so fast. Uh, it's just simple prioritizing your targets. A digital dogs, question. If you have 2 million armor, would you need regen? The answer is absolutely. Um, again, if you don't have... Um, if you don't have regen, then, or armor on kill, or repair skills, it's all the same, then your armor doesn't mean diddly squat. So it's, again, it's not how much armor you have, it's how fast you recover, which gets you out of, uh, or which optimizes your gameplay, let's put it that way. Whether you play out of cover or not, doesn't matter, but you're gonna play differently when you, when you're at zero armor, than when you're at full armor. You probably play more aggressive. You play more offensively. You put out more shots, right? But if, if you run out of med kits and if you're out of armor, um, or you know that uh, you're trying to save your med kit, so you, you play a little bit more timidly, it's just so, but if you know you have infinite armor, which is what we have, we have infinite armor, infinite, right? Because it goes down, it comes back up. It goes down, it comes back up. It goes down, it comes back up. You're going to, um, you're gonna play there. You can play that way. You can play aggressively. Question: Does the uh, Fat Cat's question? Does the disrupt mod work with armor regen? Um. Yeah, that's a really good question. That's a good question. Sorry, I'm uh, reading this other note here real quick. Give me a quick sec. Okay, sorry about that. Um, the, the, the Disrupt mod works with armor regen, but they're not related. Um, so disruption uh, would just protect you from like losing your shield or something like that, losing a skill but uh, it wouldn't have anything to do with your armor uh, or the rate in which, I mean, so it would protect your skills from going down. So that I means, so yeah, so it'd be um, secondarily related, but uh, wouldn't be directly related. Yeah, cause out tank build would work. I've created that actually, Calvin Bowser mentions a cause out tank build. So Digital Dog says, I'm on, on my bulwark, he's only running 2% regen, which he feels is enough. Yeah, and how much regen you run is just really going to be uh, based off of your playstyle, right? And so I'm playing, you know, like purely out of cover. It's rare that I pop in cover. And so that's what dictates uh, that. Okay, so, and how much armor regen. So good point though, Digital Dog. Okay, so check this out, guys. I'm going to make a lot of changes here. What I'm doing is taking out all of my protection from elites and I'm bringing in crit damage so i'm replacing all my protection from elites for faster time to kill okay so it's just reversing the concept on its head right so if you kill the elite faster then they're not shooting at you so killing the elite is another way of having protection from elites right if you think about it that way sure sure and so and also crits and everything the higher damage works for everybody non-elites too so now we're at 193% crit damage with adaptive instincts, right? Remember adaptive instincts. And so um, 
but we do have to adjust our play style. It's the thing about the chameleon is it doesn't have a lot of staggering capabilities. So we do have to be careful how bad, how quickly we start off. Uh, and so we sort of got to pace ourselves at first until we get a bunch of adaptive instinct stacks. And then we can become a lot more aggressive because then uh, we'll be able to sort of stagger the enemy or burst damage them down faster. So just keep that in mind. Um, and so when you're starting out this way, so again, uh, we are now at 190% crit hit damage when adaptive instincts are full. Um, and we still have the double bell stone. So we're getting the 10% uh, uh, armor on kill. Um, and then we have intimidate on our chest with adrenaline rush. So, but I'm going to have to adjust my play style because look at this. Uh, so we get pinned. The real thing that kills me here is that punch. <laughs> right? which is funny but it was the riot foam actually the riot foam you do not want to get riot foamed even with all the protection from elites you're going to survive with the protection from elites but um that is the uh riot foam is your weakness with any of these builds because you're standing still anytime you stand still it doesn't matter if you're running a bulwark doesn't matter you're going to go down so anyways a little hiccup there but we got back on track no doubt fuck it what build you got for us fuck it I love your name, by the way. I like saying your name. <laughs> Three piece hand of you. The sacrifice rolled skill tier one wyvern and one piece grouper rolled skill tier. Get skill damage on all your pieces. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a little, uh, little nice little hybrid crit. I use those versions a lot. Not just like that, but um, similar in concept. So, yeah, this build actually plays uh, really nice. And you just have to remind yourself to pull in and they get the good close because we are using a adrenaline rush intimidate and so you need to pull into 10 meters so you got to remember that like and i always have to remind myself like 15 meters is too far i got to get in there tight so that's what kind of sucks about intimidate i used to use intimidate a lot actually and then i i sort of stopped it because i realized from experience that the enemies they play they like to play at like 15 meters right 15 to 20 which means you're always chasing them and then they're always walking backwards. See how I'm chasing him and he's walking backwards? That's a perfect example. I'm chasing him and he's walking backwards. So he's not staying in that 10 meters. So even if I get him there for a quick second, he can walk backwards faster than I can walk forwards, which is weird. Stupid game. <laughs> that kind of shit makes me pissed off because you think about it. You're like, he's walking backwards faster than I'm walking forward. That's stupid. But uh, they give us so many weaknesses. And then, you know, I don't talk to you about this game because I love it so much. But... Um, that's just one of those little nuances that's just really annoying. It's just like, um, it's just, it's just, they give us so many weaknesses. It's just like, at least make us faster walking forward than they are walking backwards. But anyways, playing out of cover, guys. I mean, we're doing it here with this build and we took out all our protection from elites. So, um, yeah. So this is relying on armor regen, armor and kill, but uh, most importantly, that agility. So... Uh, stay fast. Oh, more right foam. So let's get out of that. Yeah, this stuff is nasty. Anyway, so yeah, you don't have to have protection from elites for these builds to work. So I'm showing this. It doesn't matter. And any of the builds you've seen so far, okay, they would all perform very similar to th exactly what you're seeing here. All right. So this is no protection from elites. But this is what happens. See, I'm having to slow down just a little bit. Protection from elites puts your heels on overdrive. Because it protects you, right? And then I ended up going down. So, you know, that's a big difference for me. That's a big difference for me. Uh, I mean, it's fine. You'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll compensate out of that here in a few seconds as I kind of get adjust myself a little bit to the play style, which is what I have to do. But uh, you do get a lot more damage, but um, it's not as much as the amount of protection you were getting beforehand. That makes sense. Jimmeron King, what up, brother? Yeah, this is a mix that I made, man. It's a, a bunch of different songs. But uh, yeah, if you guys didn't know, also, um, if you guys are on the hardcore uh, member level, uh, I create a music playlists for you. I actually have a new one coming out here in just a few. Um, but there are also music videos, and those are also accessible in the, um, the playlist that's on my YouTube page. So... Um, let me actually uh, send you guys a link here uh, to the, the whole group uh, that's in the Players Club because I want to make sure you guys are utilizing all your assets. And also, there's a private channel for members only 
on Discord too. So check that out here. I just I just posted a link, and um, so to my it's actually just to my YouTube page, but at the top is a members only playlist. And just make sure you, you utilize that because all your members only resources uh, go in there, a lot of them. But inside, if you're a hardcore Bandito member level, um, you also get digital downloads. And I have a SoundCloud, you go so you can download the, uh, the music that I use in many of these videos, but also create a custom playlist for you, as well as a music video, which is hosted on YouTube. So there's perks, you got perks. So, okay, so let me see, what am I doing here? So, oh yeah, yeah, so this is a better chess piece to use. So now I'm gonna use the Perfect Intimidate. That's gonna give us 5% um, more uh, amplified damage. So this is gonna be a little bit stronger. And so, and then we, um, I'm gonna bring in even more crit damage here um, as soon as I find the right gloves. So what I'm doing here is actually adding more damage. Still using the same configuration of pieces, just more damage. And I'm just looking for the right piece here. So take me a second and I'll show you what we got going. Fuck it's been using the big horn. I like the big horn, man. It's a lot of fun. I like using it with striker personally. Uh, you, I don't like using it outside of striker, I guess is the best way to put it. But I do like the gun itself. Okay, so then now I'm gonna use an improvise uh, so that I can bring in crits and more repair. We're gonna get a little bit more repair skills out of this too. Uh, but it's not gonna be as strong as uh, the memento because the memento is giving us a lot of repair skills with that skill tier. Um, but this will be all right. Uh, we're going to get a lot more crits out of this one. It's going to be a nice balance. So we're actually getting our, our armor regen back up. And we're also getting more amplified damage from that chest piece. Okay, so here we are. This, uh, this one you need to see. I think you're going to like this one. Because for those of you guys that like that max armor, max regen, max damage, this is going to be in the all three category. So this is giving you all three, okay? So max damage, max regen, max uh, armor. Look at that. So here we go. Let me... Uh, uh, let me get this last mod on here real quick, actually. So there's a quick, let me quickly pause this, okay? Look at that. 1.8 million, I think it's close to 1.9. But notice we're running the Hunter Killer chess piece there. Okay, that chess piece is the perfect Hunter Killer. And then um, that's uh, a big deal because that's giving us 5% more amplified damage. Okay, now let me switch over to my character here okay cool so this is the build that you're about to see okay and so we got crit damage and armor regen everywhere okay crit damage armor regen oh let me get out of that stupid gun okay that ammunition okay crit damage armor regen everywhere okay and then i know adrenaline rush still but now we got that 10 percent armor on kill so that's like putting your armor regen on uh overdrive every now and again right and then here's the chest piece Armor, armor regen, crit damage, crit damage, right? And then perfect intimidate now. So we just got 5% more amplified damage. This was actually a smart choice, a smart use of this chest piece because we're running two pieces of golem anyways, right? Because that's giving us 1% armor regen. So, um, so yeah, that's why you wanted to do that. Now I got repair skills, armor regen on this and more armor. So we've got armor on everything, but I like having the repair skills. So I decided to keep that. I can run this into more crit damage, but if you look here, oops, we're at 190% uh, crit damage. That's plenty. The reason why is because adaptive in instincts, um, that's giving us um, also 90% weapon damage. So 190% crit damage with 90% weapon damage is a lot. And why is that a lot? Because we also have 40% amplified weapon damage. So I don't need more crits. But you do have room for 12% more crit damage and that's where you can put it, right there, okay? And then uh, repair skills it works perfectly here because you don't want crit chance. So if you didn't want, uh, you could put uh, armor regen there instead. But uh, I, I decided to go with uh, repair skills. But actually, 
armor regen would be the smarter move here instead of repair skills because armor regen is based off of how much well no it's not this one would be actually be fixed at 5,000 armor regen so either way you can do armor regen or repair skills it's the same um and then here as the same consistent piece we've had on every single build that's sort of uh, all these builds are are built on top of this as its base armor regen so we got one percent armor regen there and then we got the armor regen as a secondary attribute also and then the skill duration is really helpful that synergizes with these skills right which are putting out twenty-eight thousand plus uh what is this one thirty thousand so let's uh, that's actually thirty one thousand so let's round that to sixty thousand between those two and then armor regen here we got sixty thousand plus eighty thousand so one hundred forty thousand heals per second okay and then we got adrenaline rush protecting that so that's what we're looking at and we do have 10 percent um armor on kill so that's like putting it on overdrive keep that in mind right it's like putting that 10 percent armor on kills like putting your armor region on overdrive so what we've done is now have eliminated that protection from at least for more crit damage right and we're gonna be at 55 percent crit chance and 190 percent crit damage uh got that 10 percent armor and kill and then 80,000 armor regen at its base of course the heals on top of that 10 percent protection from elites so fun little belt this one's gonna be fun we're gonna like it what up typhoon i see that you joined us i'm scrolling back here in the feed welcome man sup sup so southern cowboy if i remember right i probably asked you a hundred times but i think i remember you from southern california yeah this is gonna be a fun build i like this one um i'm not a big uh, max armor guy so you guys know i actually ra rarely use max armor um but with this one, it sort of just made a lot of sense because um, of the layout that we had, you know, where I was using Golan anyways, and you know, it just kind of it just kind of brought it all together. But um, I just wanted to show, make sure I showed a full spectrum of it. But it actually works really well. Um, but you do have to make sure you pull in close, and so you'll see. Just because you're running all that armor uh, doesn't mean they can't clean your clock quickly so you do have to uh, play in close the reason why is because we're working off of adrenaline rush we want that power from adrenaline rush but uh, so i'm building stacks here so this guy's nice it's nice to come up against one of these guys up first because these stacks are going to come handy for the rest of the thing rest of the control point so here we are at full stacks basically going into the fight hunter killer is the way to go so fuck it fuck it agrees with me Thanks for the shout out on the playlist, Biko. Good to see you too, man. If I didn't say what's up to you earlier. East 16th. What up, man? You're saying so much sauce on these builds? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to choose from, man. But I think that... Uh, I appreciate that, though. Yeah, a lot of... I'm going to put thought into each one of these. And so I'm giving you... The idea here is variety. And so showing you that... Um, uh, that How these things should be working together. But if you want armor regen then you need to be relying on your armor regen to get out of cover, right? Not bonus armor. The bonus armor really in this case is a damage modifier. That's the only reason why I'm using the bonus armor is because I want, I want that intimidate. I need that intimidate, right? I need it. I need the power. Uh, we got a lot of crits going once we get the stacks and that kill power is gonna feel nice and comfy. Um, so, and this is actually gonna be a good fight. I think we get, I get a... Uh, also a, uh, a resource convoy uh, mowing through too, but this is gonna be a good fight. You just have, if you're not using that bonus armor to your advantage, then it does go to waste. You do have to pull in on that guy and then uh, within 10 meters and see how they like to run away. They love to run away from you. So uh, be sure you, you stay in 10 meters or you're not getting that juice. Juice gone wild. Yeah, Fuggett says if you're not if you're getting hit by multiple enemies, then uh, eighty thousand regen will bring you down. Yeah, 
again, a regen alone will not keep you up. You know, regen only works with the layered layering of system, whether that's a fast time to kill or uh, bonus armor or protection from elites or all of the above together, which I really like, actually. Then uh, that's what keeps you alive. So. And then also some smarts. Like, I know that this guy's like really tanky. And I have no protection from elites. Remember that. Zero protection from elites. So this is all regen. All heals and regen happening here. I'll pop out a cover a little bit just to show you guys what he can do. But look at that damage that he puts out, right? He's really tanky. You can also run Memento with this setup. It would actually be a smart play to go that way too. Just real I decided not to because I wanted that 10% armor on kill. And I also wanted my Intimidate to stay up longer. And so Adrenaline Rush helps your Intimidate stay up longer. So that's the reason why I chose to go with two-piece Bellstone. But Memento is great on top of this. You're going to get the 3% armor regen from Memento, and that's going to be nice. It's going to help you heal through things quickly. So, Saturday night. Hey, uh, just a quick reminder to hit that like and subscribe if you haven't. Guys, I really appreciate that. It helps me. Helps the cause. Support the cause. Also, join Texas Players Club if you haven't done that. You know who you are. Uh, all these uh, uh, guys in the Players Club have those cool little skulls, but all, they also get perks. They get that classified build, secret builds. Depends on your, what level you are. Uh, uh, the perks change. Uh, hardcore banditos um, also get digital downloads, um, which right now are uh, music video playlists, so gaming. And I actually create them at a pace uh, according to what you're seeing here. So they kind of uh, have a beats per minute that's uh, sort of fast paced to kind of get you pumped up and in the zone. Um, I think music helps me play better, helps me focus better um, when I play in games. So I really enjoy having a good playlist when I'm, which is uh, one reason why I like to consider myself a solo player because I like to turn on my sound su surround sound really uh, high so I can get the impact of the game. And then also my music playlist, I like to turn my music on really high. Uh, just jam out, have a good time, get in the zone. Um, yeah, and so I create this music playlist to just kind of help give me some juice. Uh, it's like kind of like the the sixth player in basketball, or like it's kind of like my wingman, <laughs> or maybe it's like um, it's an, like another talent on my build, basically. Maybe that's a way to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> My music playlist is like having an, uh, an additional uh, build talent for me because it gets me uh, in the zone, all juiced up. I play better, more focused if I like the song. But anyway, so yeah, I like so I build these playlists to be uh, have a good beats per minute, high tempo because I'm always playing like a crazy man, trying to go fast. I like to clear a lot of content. You know, I'm always farming. That's usually why. Um, I'm taking advantage of the looting shooting part of this game for sure um but so i like to clear content fast i like to clear my maps um i find myself farming the hell out of a particular zone speaking of classified builds the next classified build is, gonna be, is super hot i'm calling it perfect i was hoping to show you gameplay footage of that today but unfortunately i'm gonna have to push that off to till tomorrow so i might uh, squeeze in another live stream tomorrow uh evening as well um, because I just, uh, I needed to get this one backpack and I didn't get a chance to farm it because the map wasn't, uh, matched up nicely. So, um, hoping tomorrow's map be a little bit better. If not, then I'm going to have to finish it off in the summit and I just hate doing that. It gets so boring in the summit. <laughs> I don't mind it too much sometimes, but I don't know. I rather, I rather farm in the open world. Actually, my favorite part to farm is it's down here in the southwest where I am. And then also the east mall. That's where I like to spend a lot of my time farming. It's just really efficient because I got three control points back to back. And then I can fast travel down here uh, to both of these control points in the southwest without actually going to a safe house. And when you go into your safe house, you lose a lot of your perks, right? Like your your stacks of things. Anyways, look at this. build. You guys have been noticing this build. It's done a really good job been able to stay out of cover the whole time. I have 0% protection from elites. So we got enough damage uh, for it to make sense. And then um, uh, our regen is a lot stronger than it was a little bit earlier. Um, uh, thanks to maxing out the armor. So we max up the armor. So, But again, armor regen means nothing without a fast time to kill. 
So those, this build brings both of those things together. So let me just give you another quick preview of the build here. So this is the build. This is bringing both of those things together. So it does have 1.8 million armor, um, which is really high, but that's helping our armor regen. I mean, our, our bonus armor stick around longer, which is helping our perfect intimidate stick around longer for 40% more amplified damage. And then we are at, oops, we're at 190% crit damage, max crit chance, basically. And then um, 80,000 armor regen at its base, there'll be more, thanks to the heals and uh, minimum protection from elites. That's just coming from our specialization. So 80,000 80, armor regen plus uh, basically 60,000 heals per second. Yeah, 60,000 heals per second. So we're at 140,000 uh, heals back per second total. And then um, this bonus armor here is what's helping to stay out of cover longer because it's caught, that's our invisible shield, right? That's our invisible shield concept there. So, but uh, yeah, I think that was a good demonstration that control point on how that build works. Uh, there's different, uh, the, all the other builds before this um, and in the, in the crash site as well, the crash site was running something similar. I just, I basically took the same build from crash site and just made it a little bit stronger. So uh, that's all this was. So crash site was, was just a little bit weaker than this build. And so I made the crash site build stronger. So this is a better build than what you just saw in crash site. So uh, add smarter pieces and then more armor. But the armor is not what makes it godly here. Just keep that in mind. Actually, you'd be probably better off running less armor. The only thing that the armor is doing is it's making that adrenaline rush last longer. Uh, which is making intimidate last longer and then also that bonus armor helps uh, buy time for our regeneration to be doing its work so that's the whole concept of the more armor it's not for the more armor part the more i could give a shit about the more armor that's because we're just it goes down just as fast whether we had one million or two million so bombs over baghdad e16 i like it <laughs> i need that one bombs over baghdad I was, uh, I'm doing another song, um, uh, by, gosh, I just, never mind, because I just forgot the stupid name of it, but, uh, yeah, man, I like, I like bringing in some, uh, heavy rock ones every now and again, too, and kind of remixing those. Metallica's good, yeah, I like Metallica Dogs. I like the Enter Sandman stuff, is that the same album? Ender Sandman, the, uh, the all black album that from back in the day. That was a good, really good album. I like that one. But I'm bad with names, so you know, ask me the name of the song, I won't be able to tell you. <laughs> or artists, like I'm really bad with names. Always have been. So what would you guys? So what do you guys think? You know, you've seen a lot of builds. I know uh, most of you. I've been here for uh, since we started, but you know, so uh, all the builds up to up to, until we got to this one, we're running at 1.3 million armor. So this is the only build that went over 1.3 million armor. You know, what do you guys think? You know about these? Would you go? Um, would you bring that armor down by doing so? Then you know you're adding to a faster time to kill, right? And so, what do you think? Um, you know the bon more bonus armor it's just a different uh, way of thinking like for me like more bonus armor means um i'm preserving that intimidate which is also uh, ensuring i have a faster time to kill so it's kind of protecting intimidate right not my body as much um and so the way i think about it but um i think when you're running the memento backpack specifically all right if you're running the memento backpack you don't want to, you want to go less armor with Memento, less armor, because that means more damage if you're looking to get out of cover. Well, in both cases, really. And that's because you pick up one of those trophies, the short-term buffs are really powerful, 5% more weapon damage per red core. So if you have four red cores, right, which is really easy to do, 1.3 million armor is four red cores. If you do that, then that's 20% weapon damage bonus every time you pick up a trophy on top of everything else. On top of Intimidate, on top of uh, Adaptive Instincts, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, see those heals? That's nice. 
damn nice. And that's because uh, that's because uh, adaptive instincts kicked in. Now I will die here in a minute because this is where my wife entered the room and uh, she cut off my view. So, but I want to scroll back just a second and make sure you guys see that. So uh, that didn't seem like it went backwards. Okay, check this out. Check out this. This the my armor is gonna go all the way down, right? Again, doesn't matter how much armor you have. They cleaned it, right? So, but look how fast it comes back. Look at that, all the way back. Now, that was a perfect, a perfect example. And the reason why, I'm gonna show you one more time, because I want you to see that. The reason why it was perfect is because um, the bonus armor, check, watch how the bonus armor allows my heals to go up. So the bonus armor is protecting my, my healing capabilities, right? That's what the bonus armor is doing. See, the bonus armor is there the entire time where I'm healing, right? And now I'm 100% healed. Right there, I'm 100% healed. And then I kill him. You see, that is a perfect example of Invisa Shield, right? Now, if you're using the bonus armor for anything more than that and intimidate, then why do I even have armor regen? Get rid of the armor regen. If you're relying on your bonus armor 100%, then you don't need armor regen because the bonus armor is making the regen pointless, right? So you can use bonus armor and armor on kill as a combo. And so that's how you would rely on bonus armor. So you're like, okay, well, the bonus armor isn't going to heal me. True. So you need something that heals you. And so what I'm saying is that if you're overly relying on bonus armor, then use armor on kill instead. Okay. It's more efficient. Anyways, that was a good gameplay series right there because that's, again, that's where my wife walked in. <laughs> no excuses, but... Um, I had a good handle on that situation, actually. Bucket says, in order to have high regen, you have to have it in all places. That's all I'm saying. Totally true. And so that's my point. I mean, I think you're bringing up a really good point. I know you're having a conversation that I'm not in tune with, with Damien there. But uh, so I'm, um, I don't know what the conversation is truly about. But Jossmar, Andre, welcome, welcome. Uh, is that it? DPS build using everyday carrier. Uh, let's uh, put a parking, uh, put that in the parking lot for a quick uh, moment because that's a good question. But uh, you do have to have armor regen in all these places, and that's sort of my point, which is like you, you have to spec so much armor regen into your build, you better be using it correctly. If not, what a wasteful build! Again, and one of those measures, this is what I see all the time, guys. I see that bonus armor up too much, too much bonus armor on a build. Uh, for armor regen an armor regen build should not have a lot of bonus armor okay so the only reason why we have bonus armor here uh is for two reasons one is we're using it to power up intimidate so that's key but if you're overly relying on your bonus armor then just put on armor on kill get more time to, your time to kill up if i didn't like what 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 Fugget is saying is that armor regen you have to have armor regen everywhere in order for it to be worth a damn a hundred percent agree whether you're out of cover or not, if you're doing armor regen, you gotta have it everywhere. Or else it doesn't really, it's not really doing anything for you at all. Um, so, spec it in everywhere. And then you're like, if you're not using it, then oh my gosh, you just lost all of that damage. You know, all of that damage gone. And so, um, you'd be, so if you have a lot of bonus armor, if that's the route you're gonna go, if you have a lot of bonus armor, you're not using your armor regen, right? So I want my bonus armor in spurts. That's just long enough for me to get my kill. And then I want it to go away. And then also uh, to help me really heal up. It's, it's just give, not for very long too. I just need it like for a second or two to help my healing, uh, protect my healing. But if you, if, you, if you notice something like if you're using Bloodsucker, for example, Bloodsucker is a horrible thing to pair up with armor regen. Horrible right because it, it basically partitions your build bloodsucker partitions your build so the armor regen is only useful when you don't have any bonus armor from from a bloodsucker but once you get your first kill then bloodsucker kicks in and then it sort of multiplies on itself in bonus armor and then what it does is it nullifies your armor regen so bloodsucker makes your armor regen useless and so it's a, a and there's lots of things that are like that it's sort of like headhunter makes crit damage useless right as soon as you proc Headhunter talent on your chest, all of a sudden your crits don't matter because Headhunter is so strong that 
your crit chance is basically wasted, right? You don't need it. All the enemies are dying just off of a headhunter. And same thing with Bloodsucker and Armor Regen. Bloodsucker is so strong that, you you know, if you're killing, if you have a high t uh, time to kill, fast time to kill, and you're uh, proccing Bloodsucker after Bloodsucker after Bloodsucker, then where's your Armor Regen coming to play? Where? Where are you taking damage? You're not. Because it's just bonus armor on top of your armor. You're, you're protecting your armor, right? You have a shield, basically. And so you don't need Armor Regen. It's You're using it as a fail-safe, and that's no way to play in this game you're better off you know you're better off basically running in more damage on your build that's a fail safe too but a good a better use self uh fail safe you're using it all the time bloodsucker is a good talent i'm not saying it's not good but um i'm saying that you don't want it with armor regen at the same time now i'm with Fugga. Fugga says bloodsucker isn't that good i actually don't uh uh, personally, it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite. I feel like it's um, it's sort of the opposite. I always look at the first kill as your most important kill, right? Your first kill is your most important kill. Or, or in that situation, right there, with that boss, Bloodsucker would not have mattered, right? Because let's let's scroll back to that boss right there. Let me just explain to you why. Uh, so a little bit earlier, I think. Um, so. As soon as you lose Bloodsucker, or you, it's left, it's mono y mono, right? So it's you and the boss, and uh, and you're, you're and if you're relying on Bloodsucker to activate Intimidate or just to protect you, it's not going to be there because in order to get Bloodsucker, you have to get a kill, right? And so um, it's just you and the boss, and so when you got him killed then there's you know you got this bonus armor but who cares you don't need it anymore right so we're gonna see that here when we fight the boss but yeah so that blood uh uh i feel like blood sucker is really situational um first of all you don't have it on your first kill and your first kill is the most important kill because that activates everything right and so for example if you're relying on intimidate and you're free you step up to your first enemy your intimidate's not even active right you have to get your first kill and so let's say you get Bloodsucker, right? And you uh, all of a sudden you activate Intimidate because now you got Bloodsucker proc. Well, now the clock is ticking. You better hurry up and go find your next fucking enemy because you're about to lose that bonus armor you finally proc. And then uh, it only lasts for 10 seconds. So by the time you get to the next enemy, Bloodsucker's timed down on you again. So the only time I Bloodsucker really works for you is when all the enemies are literally standing in the line. Like if you catch them at a, a spawn gate or something like that right and it's just like you know that's ultra situational it's really situational bloodsucker um i definitely don't like it for legendary so if you play any legendary that's sort of a worthless talent you know and the memento bonus armor is not much different right but i it's i i hardly ever rely on the uh, the bonus armor for memento um i look at it as definitely truly a bonus armor situation but the reason why the memento is strong is not because of that it's the the damage modifiers right five seconds of uh bonus damage at 30 percent is all you need to kill an enemy and then you refreshed it all over again and so and that damage works at all distances it doesn't work just at 10 meters right so you know anyways but yeah so i'm not a big fan of that i i way rather use adrenaline rush instead of uh bloodsucker bloodsucker works great for assault rifles at range but then why do you need the bonus armor if you're playing at range, right? You can just heal through whatever damage you're taking. I'd rather have heals straight up. I'm going to get blindsided here in a second. Did not see this guy um, behind me coming. It's a shotgunner too. Boom! Did not see him. Situational awareness, fail. I agree with you, fuck it. You know, the only thing you should pair with Intimidate is Adrenaline Russian. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, now, earlier I was using it uh, with the Memento. Um, and as I, as I just explained, I see the Memento bonus armor as truly a bonus. And so it was uh, creating short spurts of amplified weapon damage for chain killing effect. You know, so it was real helpful for that. But ultimately, I then switched to Obliterate and I liked that better. So Memento and Obliterate 
works better and like i was saying when i uh, earlier in the in the stream when i did that i was saying i was playing under the laws of averages and that's why that's why it was better um because it's it's gonna average out basically it's more reliable obliterates more reliable than intimidate with the memento does that make sense to you guys so i agree with what fugget is saying that that it, intimidate is best with adrenaline rush it really is out of all the other options we have what up every other day gaming welcome man welcome to the live stream uh yeah the metas uh we do have new metas on the board uh frank and dreads what up what up um i think what fuck it uh alexander or was that, i'm sorry frank and dreads i think what fuck it is saying um not to speak for you fuck it but he's saying like that setup like the best setup for adrenaline rush i mean the best setup for intimidate is adrenaline rush but i wouldn't call that build the meta but for pvp it is the meta unfortunately <laughs> right um it just wins wins a lot of battles there but and pve it's not meta it's you know actually i stopped using it the um the new there's new metas on the table um i showed one in the last live stream um but uh do you guys see that it wasn't the last live stream it was the uh the one where we were doing um sorry i'm trying to create uh, a poll for you guys i can create a poll for you where i opened 20 exotics do you see that video uh sorry i accidentally ran this poll because there's a delay in it and so it's like annoying the hell out of me let me let me close that don't worry ignore that poll uh i'm gonna start a new one here in a second damn there's a lag in this poll okay screw that poll i'm gonna get a new one going here but Okay, guys, so um, if you happen to be the ones that were lucky enough to see this build in my uh, one of my live streams a couple of live streams ago, then uh, you're one of the lucky dogs. But uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to see it also. Okay, so I just put up a new poll. <laughs> so uh, uh, forget about the one that was a second ago because that one was a waste. But this one says, show me the new meta meta of all metas. So if you want to see this meta, we need at least 60 votes. So there's um, 100, uh, there's 120 viewers, there's 120 people in this live stream right now. So we need half of you to vote yes on this. And I will show you um, ahead of the actual build video, the meta of all meta. So we need uh, 60 people to vote on this bad boy. So I'll let that poll run for a few minutes. All right, and then uh, if we're lucky enough to uh, get that, then that'll be cool. And I'm gonna pull that up in anticipation because I know you guys are reliable. Hope you guys are having a good Saturday night like I am. I love doing Saturday night live streams. You guys are my boys i like that i have all my uh regulars too that come on appreciate you guys uh all you guys that are in the players club too uh good morning from norway to tux and all the banditos in here you guys have a great saturday night oh i appreciate that man i forgot you're from norway for some reason i thought you were in um the netherlands but uh did i tell you that my brother-in-law is uh norwegian yep my sister married a norwegian dude uh he was here um learning to be a pilot and yeah so they're actually i think they might be in norway right now as a matter of fact they were going to do after the holidays visit the in-laws the parents kind of thing but uh yeah and so they got a baby and another one on the way and so 
my niece and soon to be nephew are also half Norwegian. So pretty cool little fact. And so every time it's, oh, I've also been catching, I don't know about you guys, but I've been catching a lot of Norwegian movies over the last year on Netflix. There's a ton of Norwegian movies on Netflix, but you know, I like, I like Norwegian movies. I think that you guys got to do a good job. There's one about like, I think it's called, it's like the cave or something where this, I don't know if you've seen this one where this, uh, this group of women go down to a cave and they, there's these creatures down there. They end up killing everybody. Um, there's the troll hunters. I think that one's really entertaining. I like that one. Nice imagination. But, uh, but didn't you like your president or prime minister, whatever he is, didn't he stay, um, uh, state that there's trolls in, in Norway on like public TV or something like that. I'm wondering if that was a, a promotion to the movie. Um, but they caught that in the movie too. They actually put that, that scene in the movie, but anyways, yeah, I like Norwegian movies. There's a lot of good ones there. Oh, it's Sunday morning there, fella. Danny. Oh, yeah. Welcome Sunday morning, folks. For those of you that are on the other that side of the globe. <laughs> Still Saturday night for me. Dr. Hannes, good morning. Yeah, no problem, man. I love entertaining you, fuck it. Fuck it. You're entertaining me with your name, man. You give me something to say. <laughs> oh, you're in Cali, too. I didn't realize that. Cool. Yeah, you're a West Coast boy like me. Scott's OG, nice words, man. He says, I appreciate all you do for the community. Appreciate you, man. No, I have a good time, man. I, I really enjoy this. Um, I like bringing the community together, actually. That's what I enjoy most about it. So, that's a, you know, that's what I say. I think as, as YouTubers, the guys here on the YouTube Division 2 people, I think... Uh, the gameplay footage is rolling back here, so we're back to the original build. So for those of you that just joined, good for you because you're just about to catch this. This is uh, uh, starting basically with 60% protection from elites and crazy armor regen. Like, crazy. And you can see that here in a minute. <laughs> so, um, the first couple of fight scenes um, kind of say it all, actually. Now, the, uh, I am running the Chameleon and just, you know, with those stacks, you just have to remember that you have to wait for that to stack before your power really hits hard. And so, you know, um, the first one or two enemies, you kind of feel kind of weaker with the Chameleon, right? Um, but once you get that 90% weapon damage uh, and the crits kicking in, it feels awesome. Don't forget to hit the like or subscribe if you're just joining us. Also... Uh, there is a poll going, guys. We need, uh, what do we say, 60 votes? I need 60 votes. We've got 32 votes, so we're halfway there. But I'm going to show you the new meta of all metas. All right, so, um, uh, and this is based on TU14, so the latest updates. No gimmicks. It's just the straight-up strongest DPS build in the game. Um, well, it's mostly with the assault rifle, I think, and, I, and I'll show you why that is that way. But, um, yeah, so look forward to it giving you a little heads up on that if you were able to see the stream where i opened up 20 exotic caches then um then you uh, did see this build i squeezed it into that video that's why uh, showing up to these live streams are important i actually uh, tend to uh, have a lot of goodies a lot of free giveaways uh so to speak as um um you know extra builds that i don't actually create build videos for there's a lot of builds you guys never see, just so you know. Like, not even the Players Club. Like, I don't release them. Um, I prioritize these builds, and there's only so many builds I can put out, right? Just time and whatnot. And uh, some builds I actually never make it because I do have, a, like, a content calendar. But look at all this damage. Look at all this damage. So, yeah, I have to choose, like, the best of the best. And then sometimes there's a theme or an event going on. And so I try to synchronize those kind of things. But I have a lot of builds that you guys don't see. And then also there's builds that I don't feel like are meet the... The tuck standard so if i can't give the tuck stamp of approval on it then um you know i'm definitely i'm not gonna put out that build so anyways but sometimes there are great builds that we learn together are great 
doing a live stream because somebody will pose a question or say, oh, what about this or that? And it'll, it'll have us thinking and be like, hey, well, why not? Let's not, let's, let's, uh, let's check that out. Let's see what we can do. And we'll, we'll build, we'll create a build on the fly. So just earlier, if you guys saw, I put out, uh, I showed you this really, really special, um, bull foundry bulwark build all reds it's crazy it was a actually a really crazy build i'm gonna squeeze that in as an actual build video at some point but catch that on the replay uh if you can it's actually a really special build it's going to be amazing one you definitely want to farm for um max crit all red foundry bulwark four piece foundry uh i think we clocked in at five percent armor regen on that thing let me see it was a uh, Two percent. See if I have it saved. Uh, let's see if I did. It's easier to assemble, so I didn't save it. I don't think. But uh, let me see. I had one, two, three, four. Yeah, I think it was five percent armor regen on top of uh, one hundred ninety percent crits. So <laughs> all red. So when you pick up, and the reason why we want it all red is because when you pick up a memento trophy, you get 30% weapon damage bonus instantly, right? And so that allows you to uh, chain kill, obviously, big burst damage boost. But... I'm looking for uh, this particular pose, so uh, give me quiet for just a second here. Talk amongst yourselves. Just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I'm looking for this article that I featured in another video. And dummy me, I didn't save the link, so it's um, trying to dig it up. Oh, I know where to find it. Give me a quick second. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry I'm a little bit quiet. I'm trying to find this article. It'll be important when I show you that build. Remember to continue voting. We're almost there, guys. We got 42 votes. So if you want to see the meta of all metas, that's a meta, then um, be sure to hit that vote there. We need uh, 60 votes. We're at 43. So we're really close. And then I'll, uh, we'll take a, a gander at this new build. And I will do a full uh, build video on it. Um... Ah, I found the article. Super sweet. That's what I was looking for. All right. 44 votes. 44 votes. Cast your vote. Cast your vote. <laughs> Cats me meow meow. I always say that <laughs> when I see that meow. Probably done that to you before. I'm sorry, cats meow. I'm sorry I tortured you with that. Uh, but welcome, welcome, cats meow. What's up? Where you where you from, cats meow? Are you in the U.S.? Are you in Europe? 
we're getting a lot of uh, uh, the European time zones is entering this live stream. It crosses over the, from one zone to the other. So the East Coasters are probably logging out and saying, I'm tired. And then uh, the Euros are, are, are joining us now. So. Uh, I did see a question there, a new question there from Frank and Reds, and it's, you probably there's a discussion going on, but uh, basic game mechanic. Does the game ramp up the mobs the longer you haven't died? No, I don't believe so. No. You say does it become more difficult the longer uh, you're in combat without eliminating the combat? I don't think so. But in a sense, you're making the game harder for yourself because the longer those enemies are alive, then the more they're doing damage onto you or the likelier they are to pin you down into a corner or to corner you. So that's why time to kill uh, is the most important stat in the game for survivability or for DPS build, whatever. But time to kill is the most important stat in the game because um, 12 more votes guys, 12 more votes because it basically that is it is uh gonna add to the to your it's the greatest add greatest chunk to your survivability the faster you clear content the better um you know it keeps the enemy on their heels um it less enemies less threats headed your way right so yeah fast time to kill is important so with all of these builds what i'm doing is is balancing fast time to kill with a fast time to heal. So I'm trying to bring that in balance. Basically, I think the ultimate goal with an armor regen build is to be able to take as much, um, is, is be able to heal as fast as you're taken on damage. That's the ultimate goal. And uh, I found you can't do that with armor regen alone, that you have to have a layered system, which is what Invisible Shield is. So I'm with Invisible Shield or Invisible Shield type builds that's the only way you can actually withstand um enough damage to actually uh stay alive and heal through it now we're not talking about tank builds that's different tank build can't put out any damage whatsoever so i mean you know it can but it takes you like an hour to, sh to kill a guy right um we used to laugh at that because i'd be running with a, some buddies and we'd, we'd got we see a guy out there with his bulwark shield and his his liberty and his um you know four piece bulwark and all tanky you know and he's been focused we clear we would clear out we were using protection from elites builds and in the summit on legendary and we'd clear out the whole floor and he'd still be focused on that one npc and it's just that just made us laugh but tank builds do have their purpose i just don't think they're great unless you're using it for those specific purposes like you know if you're using it in legendary then your job is to attract all of the bullets if you're not doing that then you know not much service for the group and they also have a lot of um, room in raids for very specific things especially iron horse more than the other one but all right six more votes guys we're close six more votes and then i will show you the meta of all metas. It is the new meta build, guys. And I'll, and I'll show you why I have direct evidence and why that is. Um, six more votes, kids. Who's gonna be, the, who's gonna be six vote and then counting down. We got 113 people in this live stream. I know six of you want to see this meta of all meta builds. B Tesla shows us this beautiful meta build will be really cool. Show us this beautiful meta build. B Tesla, listen to B Tesla. All right, four more votes, we're almost there. B Tesla wants to see the meta build. Oh, Cat's Meow, you're in the US too. All right, cool. One more vote, guys. One more vote. That means we're going to see it. I know there's one more person going to happen, right? 
So we'll let that vote come in as I get ready. There it is! Ta-da! Technically, a couple of people said they didn't want to see the meta. Isn't that funny? So, uh, okay, I'm ending the poll. Appreciate that, guys. Thank you for voting. That just helps, you know, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Because I am going to be breaking from topic. That's why I need the votes. Just so you know, it's not not just a game. But there you go. So 95% of the people uh, out of the 62 that voted said they want to see it. So the point of me vote, doing the votes, just want to make sure you guys are clear, is that the topic of the day is armor regen, right? And so when I uh, break the topic, I want to make sure that I have your guys' permission to do that. Uh, because we all agreed to get together and talk about armor regen, but I want to give you this little bonus. This is a bonus, okay? So, um, first let's get into the topic and then why this is the, um, um, the meta of all metas. Let me make sure I am showing this. Go, meta here. And then, give me a quick second because I got to show, uh, change this. There we go. Okay. Have you guys seen this article before? It's a very important article. Okay. Um, this is from Reddit. It's a Reddit article. And the reason why it's important, I'm going to hide my face here for a while so you can see it all of it. But the reason why it's important is because um, this guy here, um, and I have a hard time pronouncing his name, but I'm going to scroll up. But um, Sadri or whatever. But he. he he showed why Striker is, uh, this is a basic, based off of uh, TU14 updates, but he basically demonstrated why Striker is this now the strongest build in the game, okay? And so I'm not going to go through all of these details with you, but I will drop a link, um, actually, and I'm going to go ahead and drop it uh, right now in the feed. Uh, and so let me do that real quick. So I'm dropping this to feed so that you have it for later, okay? Um, uh, because it's a really important article, but I, I'll, I'll be doing a video on this anyways, so. But, so he 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 demonstrates the math on why Striker is the best build set in the game, okay? So he, he's, uh, lots of visibility here, okay? And this is basically approved by, highly approved by the community. Um, it's voted up, uh, there was, let me see where the votes, I can't see where the votes are, but it's, 98% voted up, upvoted. So really, really, the numbers are big. I can't remember where it shows that. Um, 214 votes up. So it's, that's a highly approved article here. But anyways, um, lots of visibility on his math here. So it's not just somebody coming in saying, uh, four piece striker is the strongest build set in the game uh, opinion, you know? No, he shows his math. So basically what he's telling us, and I'll tell you why I'm showing you this is that he basically tells us that four piece striker here, mathematically, is gonna be the strongest build set in the game. On top of that, he, he mentions that the uh, uh, striker with the chess piece is, the, the chess piece is the strongest piece of striker. It's the best in slot for striker, okay? Uh, weak set, but he says that this is the part that I wanna talk about because nobody has touched on this yet, okay? Uh, so he says that here, I guess this is important first is that, so he does say that the, the chess piece is the best in slot for a striker build, but he says, however, perfect glass cannon or perfect focus has a higher damage ceiling than the striker chess piece. So he goes, in theory, I would assume that a four piece striker with perfect focus and Sawyer knee pads would have the highest or one of the highest damage zones in the game four and more sit back at range playstyle, right? Because focus, right? Um, makes you go in scope. Uh, for four auto guns and bonuses are really, uh, uh, for fully auto guns and the bonuses are relatively easy to keep up, okay? So what I did is I proved that out and I actually um, disagree with, end up disagreeing with what he says a little bit, but he's speculating here. He's not actually, he didn't actually prove this one out, but he proved out the four piece striker above. So. So the take, and I'm not calling him wrong because he was sort of guessing here and I went and tested against it. So he's not wrong. I'm just saying I tested it and ended up being different than what he, what he says. But, uh, and I'll show you what I mean. So let's, I'll show you the build here. Uh, I'm going to put this on invulnerable too. Um, so what we do know from him and his numbers is that four piece striker 
is the best build in the game when it comes to total damage output. And then he says, four piece striker with the chest piece, the chest piece is the best in slot. But he says that you can actually get higher damage if you run perfect focus, okay? So focus is this talent here. If you run perfect focus, uh, along with the Sawyer's knee pads. Now I did that, okay? In order to do that, uh, you have to run um, the, the the backpack, right? So let me make sure I grab that backpack. So uh, the backpack is gonna uh, play a role here. So I gotta get rid of something apparently. So let's get rid of that shotgun, bring in the backpack. So multiple parts here, so I wanna make sure I'm thorough. So in order to run the Sawyer's knee pads, and still have four pieces of striker then you're gonna have to run the striker backpack the striker backpack he says in his article is the weakest uh striker piece okay so it does the least amount for you you're better off using uh another talent like composure or vigilance or whatever okay but he's still saying that he speculates that you could run that this build right here is the strongest build in the game okay so let's see where we're at so we're at 51 percent crit chance so let's see if I can get that higher um, crit damage, crit chance. I think I might have a striker mask. Boom. Okay. So we're going to test that out. So I'm going to show you uh, his theory build. There you go. So that should bring her. Okay. 57% crit chance, 69% crit damage, 120% crit headshot damage. Okay. Nothing else matters. Um, and then, so this is giving us, the backpack is giving us more crit, I mean, more amplified damage. It takes this uh, striker's amplified damage from half percent to point six five percent so that's a lot more okay and then we're running focus that's giving us um 50 more uh weapon damage when you stay in scope long enough okay so now he's saying perfect focus is actually uh he's speculating that that's stronger okay so i just have regular focus so let's put on pristine example which is perfect focus okay so cool so now i need to put a crit chance mod here so we're gonna lose a little bit of crit chance. So uh, by doing that, nope, we're at the same, 57, 68. Okay, cool. But what we lost is uh, headshot damage basically because I was running Providence before. So, and now that, see, Eroli gives you 10% marksman rifle damage, which is basically garbage because we're not using a marksman rifle. But instead we're getting up to 60% uh, total weapon damage, right? Um, uh, when we're in scope. And now you have to use an 8x scope, right? So uh, you have to use, uh, you want to use assault rifle for these builds because we're using strikers. And if you don't have something with a reasonable RPM, you're not going to get your stacks up, okay? So that's why you want to use an assault rifle. So uh, I don't recommend the Baker's Dozen. I mean, it's possible you can use it, but I don't recommend it. So in order to get focus to work, you have to have an 8x scope, which is cool because we're also getting 30% headshot damage. So I'm good with that. Uh, and then I got, these are my mods, so basically crit chance. Now I'm using this one because it's the strongest AK in the game. I'm sorry, the strongest uh, assault rifle in the game. We might be better with damage to targets out of cover instead of damage to armor, but this is the one I have. And notice it's not maxed out, but it's close enough. It's close enough to call it, all right? Same with this, it's not maxed out, but it's close enough to call it. Otherwise we have crit chance everywhere, basically. Crit chance everywhere, just because we need it. Crit chance. And then this one's got crit damage, but we're good on crit chance, so that's why. And then the knee pads are giving us 30% more weapon damage. So that's why he's speculating this is the best in slot because we're getting 25% amplified damage from the build, actually a little bit more, it's like 32%. And then we're getting 60% um, damage from that. Then I got, I decided to go with strained, uh, which is giving us 50% more crit damage on top of 68%. So. We have 70% plus 50, so that's 120% uh, crit damage, okay? Thanks to strained. And then we got actually a lot of headshot damage, uh, more than usual because of the scope. So 105% headshot damage is worth noting that. Okay, so that's the build. So this is gonna crit probably in the 1.3 million, somewhere around there. So let's just get that going. So we have to have our stack. So notice the uh, Sawyer's knee pads are stacked. And they're saying that this is a little bit, to use this, you gotta be a little bit more of a relaxed player because you're not gonna get the most out of Sawyer's knee pads if you move a lot. So 1.314, 1.314 is the highest it's gonna get. You see that? I'm trying to get that to stay on my. 
So you want strain to be maxed out. This is good right uh, assault rifle for strain, by the way. I'm trying to get the stick, but I'm, I always have a hard time getting the stick on the meter. <laughs> it's always 833 when I look up. Anyways, 1.314, you get it, right? 1.314, see that there? That's our max damage. So this, that's that's good, but what I suspect is that we can get more than that. So 1.314, there it is right there. Okay, so we can actually get more than that. So um, I, and I tested a few builds uh, variations already on this, so I'm going to skip a lot of that and just kind of jump right into it. So we got to get rid of the Sawyer's knee pads to do that. And then what we want to do is we want to bring in, um, actually, let me just uh, get out of here and then I'll, I have it saved. So um, it's faster this way. Boom. Okay. And so um, this is going to be a lot stronger. Okay. I'll reload that. So first of all, we don't need the Sawyer's knee pads anymore so we can move. So the freedom to move is really nice. Okay. So nothing changed on the gun. So I'm still using strained um and all the all the mods are the same okay so but instead of the striker backpack with crit chance i now have my uh provenance backpack okay with vigilance and i have more crit damage on here because um the provenance is helping us with the crit chance so now i can add more crit damage okay and then my first piece of provenance here and i now have regular focus so instead of uh Araldi, uh, with the perfect focus, I now have uh, re, -at re assigned that slot to 15% headshot damage instead of 10% weapon damage. And then uh, that allows me to uh, get my crits up as well by uh, freeing up that slot. And then we get 50% headshot damage. So, um, and then everything else, I got a more balanced crit damage here now instead of crit chance. So this, this was both crit chance in those uh, attributes. Now it's one of each crit damage, crit chance. And then everything else is crit chance crit damage and then more crit damage so now uh we are at plus one plus 50 percent from our weapon we had 166 percent crit damage and we got two percent lower crit chance so basically the same and we got 15 percent more headshot damage thanks to providence so this one is going to hit a lot harder let's see how hard One point four five. See that? Well, right there. One point four five. So that right there is the new strongest assault rifle build in the game. One point four five million. That's a beast, guys. That's a beast. Right. So you are scoped, so it is situational. All right. So it's not a run and gun assault rifle build because you're using the scope. But if you want a max weapon damage build at 1.45 that's it that's it so it's utilizing the best in the game and so vigilance uh perfect or focus and then amplify damage and so you're also getting better handling or whatever now um i'm going to show you a couple of things here in a second but we also have uh the police m4 here okay so that's a variant uh that works really well it's obviously going to drop your build because look at the uh from 141 to 101 is a big loss, but you're gonna gain a lot higher RPMs and you're also gonna gain way more accuracy. Look at the handling. So I'm gonna show you in a second why you might think or why the police M4 might actually be the better way to go, but it's not the highest damage. And then uh, another one, a place in between is this Falsa Para. This actually handles a lot better than the AKM. The AKM is a wild boar, it's all over the place. The Falsa is a lot more accurate. I'll just show you that right now, actually. I mean, the handling on this thing is way better. That's a lot better. It's just not going to be as strong, but let's see. So about 1.3 right there. If I can get higher than that. 1.372, 1.365, 1.4, it's 1.4. So yeah, I think 1.4. So we're going to lose about 50,000. So, which is a lot. Uh, but you're gonna land a lot more shots with this. The only thing that's annoying about this compared to the AK though is the uh, the mag size. So the Falsa is now on the right. Uh, let me swap sides. Okay, the Falsa is now on the left. Now the Falsa's got 40 in the in the in the mag, 
where the AK has got 50. And so you find yourself reloading a lot more with the Pulsa. All right. So um, let me put on this. Let me switch. I'm going to switch a couple of things here. Um, talents, skills, why? And then we're gonna, I'm going to show you what this thing can do. Okay. You're going to like it. Uh, shield health damage bonus per enemy. Does we're not going to use that, but we don't got a choice. Uh, now with striker builds, especially assault rifle builds, I do recommend you use gunner almost every time. Um, and that's because you use a lot of ammo with these builds. So you know you can really burn through them. I hear you. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of staying scoped all the time. It does kind of get annoying, right? It, you, it does limit you. Um, but the point is, is to show you that I think these builds are really important. And I, as a matter of fact, it's really easy to assemble this build, guys. You probably, many of you already have these pieces. I'm on the Xbox, by the way, in case you didn't know. Um, and I just use a standard controller. But um, yeah, so this is my controller, just a standard Xbox controller. But I recommend you guys try this build. Okay, I'm gonna uh, close my uh, mask there. I mean, my camera for a second. But um, I recommend you try these builds because you need to know what max power in the game is. And this is the strongest assault rifle build in the game right now. You need. It's important that you feel it, that you know what it feels like, that they, even the handling. And um, again, um, uh, Striker is boosting this uh the setup right it's making this assault rifle more manageable than what it normally is but these builds are important you need to feel it so that you know when you're running a hybrid build or any variation of this even if you're just using a different assault rifle or a different chest piece talent that you need to know how much damage you're losing you need to feel it it's important really important that helps you create the best build of whatever version you're creating even if you're creating a tank build you need to know the spread that's what i'm going to call it is the spread the spread between the meta, this is the new meta. You need to know what the mark is. It's at 1.45 million, but forget the testing range. What does it feel like? All right, now we're gonna solo legendary, all right? I'm not super great about um, uh, playing while I'm on a live stream because I get distracted uh, with questions, but uh, if you guys don't mind me not answering your questions for a few seconds, then we'll get this going, all right? But, uh, it's like chewing bubble gum and walking at the same time. I'm not the best. So so basically, I'm going to stay in scope. So cover is really important. So from here, uh, it's basically... I'm holding the, uh, the focus, the aim trigger down basically all the time. So you the tanks are your DPS check, basically. So you want to be able to out DPS the tank. So and by uh, if you're putting out enough DPS, it'll it'll retire. So um, that's basically this is how I test every build. I go here to test builds basically. And if I don't have enough damage, I know it right away because the tanks will flank me. And so otherwise, with this build, um, it's about staying in cover, right? So I killed the tank and his operator in a single mag. So, but this thing is a beast. <laughs> The handling is nasty on it, and so we're gonna run some variations. I'm gonna show you with the other assault rifles and what it can do too. But this is legendary solo, guys. You can do the whole thing like this. The whole thing. Front to back, this single build, using basically the same setup. So I'm just using the turret as a decoy, so you know. That's all it is. So this is the most dangerous part, ever, uh, as usual, just because the um, the real threat is the uh, drone operators, right? And so if you can't get to them, then they become troublesome. And they like to hide in the back. So it's still possible I can die, no matter how much power I have, if I can't get past those drone operators, just like that. And see how she's hiding in the back there? So she's being really annoying. See if I can take her out. And there's more than one of them, of course. See, she's launching drones at me even though she's back there, which is really annoying. 
makes me have to get out of cover a little bit. I think another drone operator got back here. So. Thought I heard footsteps. Didn't you hear footsteps, or is that me? Am I hearing things? Oh, there she is. Up there to front. Immediate medical assistance needed. Oh, I didn't see that grenade coming. It got me. Anyways. So, but you can see the damage output on that, but you still get situations with those um, those drone operators. So let me, what I'm gonna do here real quick is I'm gonna show you uh, the different variations of weapons. So now I'm gonna put on the police M4, all right? So we're gonna lose damage, but what's gonna happen is I'm going to uh, gain a lot better accuracy, okay? So what's also cool about the scope is that, um, you could you could take these targets out a little bit deeper than you normally would right so that's also adding to your advantage and then those headshots really hurt them so i feel like the handling here is a lot better is a lot better i'm landing more shots Ooh, what was that I feel like I got hit by a grenade, but the funny thing is I took him out before he launched it. So here's our DPS check. So can we send him back? And the answer is yes. But I definitely like this one better um, than the AK just for the handling. Though. I'm, But that's for just totally preference right here, right? So the AK is definitely a stronger build. But I like the... Um, I just like high RPM, better handling. I feel like I, uh, they do a lot more for you when you're not missing so many bullets. These guys love to hide though. Come on, come on, come on out. You will basically want to stay in scope as much as you can. So it limits that uh, ramp up time. That's why I use this uh, the shield. Allows me to get a better angle around that corner there. But one of the things I gotta mention, just to be fair, like even though this build is the new strongest build in the game, like I think negotiators is still better, you know, uh, at least in this scenario. And that's because it allows you to like, the drone operators aren't gonna be an issue. Um, you know, for solo legendary, the drone operators are always gonna be your issue. And if you just use negotiators, and stand on one spot, then it will no longer be your issue. So that guy's making me waste ammo, so I'm trying not to focus on him too much. And that's the other thing you want to be conscious of is your ammo. So it's always the drone operators. And so that's why actually my favorite thing to do is uh, get the I uh, kind of get up to the helicopter before they even come down that's my favorite way to play this actually but I can't do that when I'm live streaming I'll just be honest with you like solo legendary and that's why a lot of people don't play solo legendary it takes a lot of focus a lot, a lot of persistence a lot of um Tenacity, I guess is the best way to say it. Like the Eagle Bearer. Got him. Vital signs critical. <laughs> you see how close that thing was? Is there somebody behind me? That was close, huh? So when the Chungas come, they're not really a challenge. So again, it's just about getting these uh, drone operators out of the way. They're the real challenge. The rest of these guys. Now I'm just being cautious now of not using up all my ammo. So when those chuggas come, so having a good backup weapon that doesn't require scope like this SMG is uh, really handy. All right, here come the chuggas. So the chuggas aren't a threat. One, you just want to make sure you don't get. Uh, tagged by one of the snipers as you're shooting the chunga 
And then the other reason, uh, the other thing is, um, for me, just let them come to you. Be patient with the chungas. They're not hard. So now we're back to our scope mode now. Let me get the chungas back with this. They're not going to be a problem at all. Hi, Chunga. See ya. That snap right on my way. The only real threat in the field is actually that grenade back there. See how easy this is, guys? So, again, the only real threat is the... Uh, the drone operator so if you clear that then the rest is cool and for me uh with legendary usually the more aggressive you play the better so with um the uh what you call it so with the oh somebody's still over there give me something to play with here I'm trying to get to that sniper Time to kill is beautiful, so don't have a problem stepping up. I mean, you got a shot off. If you can see my armor there, you got a shot off. So, yeah. So, there it is. So, that's um, using the police M4. And I feel like the police M4, just that control, that added control, is a lot better. Yeah, scope isn't that bad if you play the distance. So, as long as you just stay in that zone. And with the ANX scope, actually, uh, 15 meters feels really good. So, that's SMG range. So you can put this on an SMG um, uh, and do just as well. Oh, I wish I had that. Uh, uh, we can try that next if you guys want to see that. That'd be freaking crazy. Um, but I'd be willing to show it to you because it's fun. It's a fun crazy. Uh, let me go back to uh, this safe house and I'll grab it. So a little trick, and I think I've showed this to you guys before, but there's certain SMGs that will take an 8x scope and they're actually really fun to play with. It's actually really fun to play with, um, you know, going that way. It allows you to also put in more crit damage onto your build because it um, they bring crit chance with you with it. So. So let me quickly grab this uh, other SMG and then we'll go in that room and I'll show you. So. Um, where is my, I'm gonna use the apartment. Uh, of course I'm full. Let me get rid of the thing or two. So we don't need you. And I don't need you. Okay, so. Let me grab my apartment. I, so I like using the apartment. So what's really unique about it is um, it'll take the ADEX scope, um, this variation. And so you see I have the ADEX scope already on it. Accuracy and then more crit damage. So if we look at our stats here, uh, we're at 160%, 121. So I'll go ahead and leave it there. I could, although I could put more crit damage on the build, but I'll just go ahead and leave it there because I'm probably gonna switch back and forth um, between the SMG, uh, SMG and the assault rifle. But this will be funny. This will be funny. <laughs> but I've showed this to you guys before, but it actually works really well. And the reason why is because the 8X scope plays that 15 meters really well. And that's where these NPCs usually stick around uh, that range anyway. So uh, there's very, you know, they, they kind of rush into you and then they kind of start walking backwards, right? And so they, they do that a lot. But uh, so let me grab some ammo and uh, let me grab this piece of uh, gear out right here unless it's something, in case it's something absolutely amazing. You never know. So uh, and mk16 so that's another decent assault rifle actually um switch weapons so uh let's look at the handling so they the the handling is not that bad actually that might be one worth trying i might keep that uh, i don't like the talents on it but i'm gonna keep it for a second i might end up trashing it because of... okay so let me switch to the smg so i'm on the smg now okay so <laughs> it's funny, huh? So this has got uh, the apartment has uh, perfectly measured on it, which is really nice. 
I played out of range where uh, the assault rifle would actually make more sense in this in this scenario, so I'll switch to that, and then wait for the uh, them to come in closer, and I'll go back to the SMG. So he's pulled in, so let me switch. See ya. They're in their heels, remember that. So if they weren't in their heels, they'd all be dead, by the way. So playing back here is nicer because they sort of step out of the heels a little bit more, a little farther away from the heel stations. So come on, baby boys. Let me get around to killing you. Come on up. So we want them to step up on this. That means they will die. God, those skills are strong because he almost died. There you go. Look at that medic. So this red guy gets on my way. I need to have my decoy out, but. Alright. So I, up here, I like to make sure I refill my armor before the chungas come. I mean, my ammo before the chungas come. So. So now I'm using the police M4. Switching over and back to the SMG. I'm telling you that because they look the same. Especially when you're down scope, right? So I always say I hate using the shield, but for this in scope strategy, it's, uh, it's really the way to go. It gives me a, a wider angle to the right. All right. So now what we need to do is give these chungas something to look at. So I'm going to start off with my uh, assault rifle and then work to uh, back to my SMG as I get closer. Look at they're not surviving, right? It's important that you break their chains, by the way. Keep them from getting too close to you with their stingers. So I do that a lot. So this is the police M4. So I'm not using the strongest build in the game, but it still works oh so lovely. So it was smarter for me to use my um, assault rifle against the Chungas because it's got health damage and they take health damage. This guy's going be annoying, isn't he? There we go. And that's how you solo legendary, ladies and gents. Not that hard. You know. Use your use your corners, use your cover, right? You dark zone people know what I'm talking about, right? Uh what is the target loot here? It must be assault rifles or something. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not a bad loot day. But um Yeah, you dark zone people know what I'm talking about. Hey, if you guys are just jumping in, make sure you hit the like button. Um and subscribe if you haven't. So yeah, here's the build basically. And so uh, this is the recent addition. So I added the perfectly measured with the apartment. So a lot of fun. And then um, the main one though is is the strain. And then the, what I'm saying is the meta of the game is actually uh, the AKM um, was strained. And that's because of the higher base weapon damage. This is harder to control. So, but if you're good with that, then this is the most powerful uh, build in the game. So there we go. Um, and so it's got basically 166% crit damage on it. So really, really strong. But uh, with Vigilance and Focus, and then you got to run the ADEX scope with Strain, and then the rest is just balance out your crit damage to where you need it to be. Really easy with your crit chance. Easy to put together. And it's the strongest build in the game, and it's, it's kind of fun to use, actually. So, yeah, so I hope that's really helpful. Uh, but either way, uh, you don't always need to use the strongest builds in the game. Doesn't make them better, to be honest with you. So just, uh, but you do need to try it. I recommend that you at least run it uh, a few times, you know, a couple of days or whatever, so that you get a handle on what that feels like and what the strongest build in the game feels like. So this is again is at 1.45 million, and then adjust from there on on how you want to roll with it. Now for me, I ran the strongest, and I said I didn't like it, and so I decided to go with the police M4, and it felt great. So that was my adjustment, All right? So, no, and this is uh, uh, 
Um, and this is t as of TU14, by the way. So anyway, so I really appreciate it, you guys. Uh, and also, if you haven't joined Texas Players Club, do that. Um, I will be uh, dropping links in the chat feed for you. So to make it nice and easy, if you're watching this on the replay, then you can find this link also in the description area and in the comments area. Or if you're on the PC or computer, you can um, see the uh, join us now, the join button just below the video. But I appreciate you guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed all of those builds. So many builds in this. You're going to have to catch it on the replay. Uh, so you can grab some of those. Make sure you have your screenshot button ready to go. But appreciate you. We'll catch you on the other side, y'all. Maybe tomorrow I'll be doing another live stream so that we can um, see the new perfect build, um, uh, which is crazy, crazy. I don't want to throw out too many spoilers on that, though. Peace. Cito out.